Let's go. This is turning into one of the weirdest shows I've ever done. <laughs> it really is. Catch me if you can, goddammit. Catch me if you can. Oh, uh, Will Noonan's so funny, and I'm after him, so I guess I'm uh, after Noonan. You never struck me as a sort of dude who um got too out of it whenever you got blazed. No, no, not really. It happens once in a while. Once in a while, I'm like, I can't be. <clears throat> like sometimes if I'm like at a bar or something and I'm like, I also I smoke like a joint with some people or something like that. It's like 10 minutes later. I'm like, ah, I hate bars. So oh, like, dude, I get, I, I get here. retarded. I'm just, yeah. I'm just like brain. Like, uh, I think I went to limelight. Uh, I was somewhere and someone was like, you all right? And I was like, I'm just really stoned. Am I making faces? Cause I get really into my own head yeah. and I'll just imagine stuff. That's, you know, whenever I do writing or even with coming up with any ideas and like, I don't do it as much, but I used to like, I would, you know, just zone out and wherever yeah. my eyes were last, I would be staring. <laughs> and a lot of times it would just be me reimagining like an altercation I have with someone, except now I'm fucking saying what I wish I said. And so I remember yeah. with my friends, I was at like a bowling alley and there were balloons like, you, f- why are you fighting with that balloon? <laughs> and for like 15 minutes, I was, no, maybe it wasn't that long, but just staring at this balloon, making angry faces, like yeah. mouthing motherfucker and cocksucker. Really? Yeah. So what's up with what's up Just with the, what's up with the anger you used to carry around with you all the time? Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go straight. We're into, here uh, with we're here with Mike Bain, hypothetically podcast. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just because uh, because personally, like knowing you, I didn't see that really. Well, I've Almost I've ever. worked to to do something about it actively. Yeah. To to change that part of myself because I didn't like it. Um, it's only therapy. something I've ever heard like from you like yeah say, well you know people angry, say the get... same thing about my drinking yeah, same, that yeah people I, were I like oh I didn't that. know you had a problem and it was like yeah because I keep them to myself I, I really I, had no idea and I thought you were joking like 90% of the time you'd say something like you'd be like yeah man I'm just gonna go I don't know probably black out fucking fall and break my head open again and I'd be like ah oh, Bane he's a fucking <laughs> this guy's got a dark sense of humor I like it no, I just, I and never, was like really I, I always, comedy was too important for me to let my, my problems uh, affect Leak it. Leak into it? Yeah, they, I was always super serious. That's respectable. About stand-up. Because this was my way, I was like, dude, this is my only way of getting out of, it's either I do this, I'm going to be pushing fucking road cases around till I'm 80, yeah. limping. Like, I was at the convention center, I was looking at all these old teamsters on the floor, just limping. Just, they looked like Dawn of the Dead, they're just hobbled around, yeah. and you just hear that Boston accent, just you know, <laughs> just inflicted upon by Marlboros and Fuck Newports, him. and Get I was like, oh god, I just down. don't let me be one of these dudes limping when I'm I'm already beat up and I'm yeah. thirty. I had that same thought when I was in so the bars. I was like, stand up's the only the only thing I'm I think I have any good at talent at is yeah. entertaining people, and I was like, this is my way out. You so I always took it serious. It. But the uh, anger, I don't. I think it's just part of. Uh, Growing up in an angry household, yeah, like my father is just filled with anger. So when that's how you're raised, you just naturally, yeah. oh, absolutely. like I used to think I was a shit kid, and my my parents had a reason to beat me, yeah. and I was like, maybe if my, if I didn't learn from them, just be filled with hate all the time, I wouldn't have uh, been, been such a problem. Like I used, me and my brother would beat the shit out of each other, and then how uh, many brothers? And just s- me and my my younger brother. How how much younger? He's three years, but he's uh. he's bigger than me now. We were always about the same size, and we would just yeah. have battles. Like he bottled me with like a, a right in front of uh, a neighbor one time, and my mother flipped out. He stabbed me with an idiot stick and a butter knife. Uh, Damn! I he hit you with st- a bottle. Yeah, a glass an bottle? IBC root beer bottle. He cracked me over the head with it. <laughs> Did it break? No, no. Because I've been hit over. Let, the head. Left me a nice lump. That's what I was gonna say. I've been hit over the head with a bottle three times and never broke. Oh. I've been hit in the head with a few things. Yeah. Bottle Maybe that has something to do with hands. <laughs> Have you been hit in the head a lot? Maybe you should be a comedian. You just feel that thump through your skull. Yeah, yeah it's a I weird just, feeling. I remember I, I was being drunk when I got hit with a brick, and I just remember feeling like there was an earthquake inside my head. A brick? Yeah, right outside the old comedy vault. In that alleyway there. Was that a mugging or a fucking... No, I fought like five bouncers from the bars next door. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you're an animal. Uh, well, it... it, it so you I quit drinking, though, was, for the listening I, yeah, I people. Have. You, I have. When was, how long has it been now? 
It's been, so my last episode was... <laughs> it sounds like you just finished taping yeah. <laughs> a sitcom called Drinking. The, the last... Uh, oh, we just wrapped up uh, the last season. Season in the episodes <laughs> of uh, Mike Baines' debauchery was, <laughs> was the, the Patriots uh, Super Bowl. Dude, that's so funny. I know some. I know a guy that died celebrating the Patriots Super Bowl. I know a guy that... I know a few guys that relapsed after like years of sobriety I on the had Patriots been, Super Bowl. I had been sober for three months before that. So that was that was a while back now. That was February, March, April, May, June, July. It's like six. That months. was what made me go, start going like go to meetings every now and then. Yeah, was that because I I had gone to a party, I got high, and I was like I didn't have a sip of beer or liquor the entire time, and then I left, and I take took the train home, and as I'm walking from the train to my house, I was like. Am I really just not going to drink ever again? I can just do. So I go inside and I fill up a pint glass with gin and maybe 10% like OJ and drink it. Whoa. And then I just do the next one full of gin. And then I just, w I wake up uh, and my girlfriend's screaming at me and she's like, it's three in the afternoon. What the, it's, it's three in the afternoon. I had been out for like 12 hours at least, maybe more. You went out? In the black. No, oh, no. Oh, I unconscious. Meant, like, unconscious. <laughs> I thought you blacked out. And she's out. like, my, I live with her family. She's like, my parents heard you throwing up. And I was like, oh, I got a fuck. Oh, uh, damn. That's embarrassing. That's the thing about drinking. I don't miss at all is like the embarrassment of like shit like that, like doing something crazy. And then like, you don't even remember if it, it. If only it was my, if it was just my own shame that I had to deal with, I wouldn't have stopped. It yeah. If I had to deal with the embarrassment of how... You know, people, other people saw me in that sort of situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of stuff like that where it'd be like, I'd wait, I'd go home with a chick and I'd still be like fun. Like, yeah. cause I'm like in the bar and it's like, I'm not, but somewhere like in the middle of the night, I'd get like too fucked up and I'd, it happened a couple of times. You'd wake up and they're looking at you like you were fucking nuts last night. Like you broke my coffee table oh uh, see i would always hurt in. myself get myself in trouble because i i actually I wouldn't, no, every, I wouldn't like get angry or anything i'd just be like a fucking slop sloppy mess like i'd fall this, that like, was me i was i was just a mess like i yeah. i was a pretty jovial drunk for a long time towards the end i started getting angry as i couldn't suppress my anger anymore yeah and um as life really started bending me over <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh after so that's when i started uh getting angry drunk but i mean every fight i've ever been in i was wasted you you had a good, uh, you had a good like chunk of time though. Right now, so it's like you seem like you got it under control. Like, no, yeah, I I think I finally did. Um, knock on wood. I but yeah. but every I've had some some points. Like I was sometimes when I w work for certain companies for my job, my day job that I still have. I'm like, oh, I want to fucking drink. Yeah, yeah, I need to just get because I used to when I when I worked at this particular building, <laughs> I I used to drink. Towards the end, I was drinking on my lunch break. Yeah, you know, all the time. Or if, if if sometimes they keep me there from morning eight a.m. till midnight, and I was like, "Oh God, you guys!" Are, uh, yeah. After after second lunch break, I'm coming back smashed, and that's what you're gonna get from me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was. I remember what, what, I was still looking for a day job when I quit drinking, like right before, and I was looking for jobs near bars so i could like dip out at lunch and like grab mm. a couple shots of vodka i was like planning my life around it you know what dude, i mean dude i did uh, every every show or mic i would go to i'd stack up at the packy before yeah and then sometimes if, if if it was still open after and i would always have like every time i went to a show i had a fistful of nips in my pocket <laughs> and especially if i had to deal with certain bookers or owners and i was like oh, yeah this is, I got to go into this social situation where I'm not part of this clique and I'm just going to, I'm going to down three of these real quick. Yeah. I, uh, a few more. And on the train, my favorite thing to do was to drink on the train, drinking on the train and then walking drunk. <laughs> just, I've walked over every inch of this city wasted. Me too. That's something I used to love to do too. I used to walk around New York, shit face, just walk, walk, walk. Oh, when I lived down there, that was uh, when yeah. I was in Harlem, I was like, I can drink whenever. And it's such a good city oh, to walk. Yeah. There's always, yeah, I, I would just walk for it. New York's a drinking fucking city, man, and there's there's it's not just because of the way it is. Like it's stressful, yeah, but it's just it's a fun city to drink in. It's fun to buy oh, from bar to bar. They put it's fun us to, to shame. Around. Oh, absolutely. The, the bars don't close till four or five a.m. Women you, like pick guys you have up. Happy hours. Women pick guys up. That was that's, so amazing. That's to me. the best thing about that city. That was like that. I was like, that was so bewildering. I felt <laughs> like I met another species of human being. When you uh, what do you think about like? 
because I totally, I totally didn't, had no idea that you were having any struggle with booze. And, and by the way, I don't think it's that crazy to bring nips to an open mic. I think a shitload of comics do that. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't drinking with people. I was yeah. drinking alone, and it was, it was happening more and more. It's also just the way I drank. I, I, yeah, I didn't have an off switch, so I drank the nips at the open mic. I then went home and killed whatever liquor I had in my yeah, apartment yeah, yeah, until I couldn't move. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was the same way. I would, it would be a slow progression but i would do the same thing like i'd be i'd be in a blackout and i'd like take vodka out of the freezer and like That's, take a was, swig of it uh, you know drunk me just hates sober me yeah so whenever i would have a few and i'm like oh i gotta be work in the morning i gotta be up at five yeah 2 a.m i'm drinking tequila like half a bottle of it and, and then i wake up hungover and i'm physically ill but you do you feel like since you stopped drinking like comedy career wise it's been better like yes, I, I feel like absolutely. you've been working a lot more like legit stuff like it's since. amazing how much more time you have when you're not hung over <laughs> for 12 hours that's what or... kills you man that's like well, people don't even fucking talk about that like they're like oh i'm so much healthier now thing. i lost weight the first thing you realize is you're like wow i was wasting a lot of time when i was you know just not necessarily drunk but feeling like shit all the time from being drunk on a nightly basis. Oh, dude, you know? that was if, if I could still rock a hangover like I did when I was 21. Yeah. In college, I might not even thought about changing. Oh, me but the, they got to the point where they were like Two my or, skull was shattering down the middle. Yeah, when I would wake they up. like last like three days. You're like the last that when I fell off that wagon, it was two days of me being bedridden. I was that fucked up. Wow. Yeah. I get the shake. I used to get the shakes when I would. Like, I never drank enough that I got f- clinically addicted. Yeah. I, I my my whole thing was mental. Like I need this to get through this fucking problem. I I I definitely I didn't like you know for a long period of time. But the last month I drank, I got medically addicted in one month because oh, I just really? like I just drank 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 like twenty four seven for about thirty days, and then the end of it like sort of freaked out. Like what have I what have I been doing? Like what's going on? So I went like cold turkey, and it was like. It was like a brutal, it was like a heroin withdrawal. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was really bad. I didn't uh, sleep for like three days. I've thankfully never gone through any withdrawals um, other than caffeine and sugar withdrawals. But yeah, no, yeah. I never, I've experimented with plenty of drugs, but the only one I used continually was weed and alcohol. And, and now you just never. smoke weed, right? Yeah, but even that I'm trying to, well, I know I do other stuff. I don't stuff. smoke as much as I used to. I don't, to. I mean, like, I, I, I wrote this joke in my act where I'm, I, I can still appropriately responsibly do cocaine which i can i'll do two lines and i'm like why would anyone spend 80 dollars on this yeah it's just like what's plus when you're not drinking it sucks i've never done i haven't done coke in so like overrated. T- over a decade it's uh i i, I prefer <laughs> mushrooms and hallucinogens something natural i don't get that chemical I did it a feel a couple times in my early 20s but i was ne- i never got the thing like man like i could get addicted to this because it was for me i'm pretty i'm pretty energetic and i have like a pretty I have pretty good, like, social confidence and stuff. I'm not, like, super, like... It, I think different drugs that appeal to different people for, like, different reasons. And, like, Coke is for people who are, like, in... They're not, like, extroverts anyway. So it's, yeah. so it's like, good for them to be extrovert. But I'm kind of an extrovert naturally. So it's, like, Coke just made me go, like... I feel like, you know, I kind of feel like my stomach's cramping. And I just got to, like, take a dump. And I'm sort of yeah. anxious. You know what I mean? I, I would get but, anxious. That was But, like, I'd weed and it. alcohol, I've always really loved. Because it was, like, calm calming things down and just like slowing the whole machine down a little bit which i which i enjoy i was yeah because i never needed booze i could always be sociable and i was boisterous and just i i said whatever i wanted to say regardless of how raunchy it was yeah as long as i felt like it was honest when i was sober so alcohol wasn't that much of a big difference for me so i think i was just genetically predisposed to it before i even picked up that beer well and then i you know growing up with that kind of drinking habits yeah and i think it's a common thing like nowadays because it's like a lot of people have you know like anxiety and depression has like always been a thing in a, in society but i think it's more prevalent now just because of like the way the world is the way technology is the way like the way life is set up now where it's kind of like it's tough to be anything but upper class yeah it's like pretty much everyone's got their back against the wall unless you're like part of this quote one percent of like everyone's struggling and even people. people who i look at who shouldn't be struggling end up in a situation where they're struggling because they're chasing some false dream like i yeah. work with people who are more senior than me and make more money than me or even when I've, I've met people who make six figures i'm like you don't have to buy a boat 
Yeah. You don't have to take out a second mortgage. You don't have to do those things. Yeah. But they're convinced they have to because that's the American dream. And yeah. they think that will f- have make me happy. seven kids, six kids. You know, it's, kids. It's, it's that stuff you learn when you start getting help about trying yeah. to, f- about being sober and not abstinent, about dealing with the fucking hole inside you. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's, it's really all the about. Whole, all Mar- our whole society is just... You're doing therapy now too, right? So yeah, I do therapy. Well, I don't really go to meetings unless I, I feel like I'm going to use. I, yeah, I haven't gone... Therapy I, does help me. I went at the beginning. Yeah, I, I went for a little while. Like I liked it a lot. I do a lot of like, I read a lot of self help books. Therapy was what what really helped save me with like anger issues. Yeah, Cause it's so funny though. I never knew you as. I never thought you were an angry dude. Like, um, maybe like you know the way that like a lot of Boston men kind of carry around just like a grumpiness, but never like. Well, I was happy, but I, I I get this ability where I can I have I have a dichotomy. I can have two different things going on in my head completely at the same time. Yeah, two completely completely competing ideas. I, think that's I could be happy and then normal. filled with. I feel you know, that rage. way. <laughs> I feel but that it, way a lot. Yeah, I, I just grew up that way. I was just a, a quiet kid. I, I went to fucking bad schools and I got my ass kicked a lot. And <laughs> uh, you, uh, just so everyone knows, Mike is a fucking great comic. If you haven't heard of him, you pr- you've been getting some good shit this year, though. Yeah, did, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Did you know, you know what, dude, with Bobby Kelly? Yeah, that was that was fun. Um, sort of in a fucked up way. Yeah, it was a real roundabout way. <laughs> I mean, I had to get smashed in the first episode that I. That First episode did. I won, they were just airing a clip of Sort of like a hazing else. type thing, but... You but it was all funny. What was the story there? I mean, I I had know, met but. Bobby's old producer at a show down in New York, and we were talking, and we hit it off, and uh, his name's Deepu. He runs a funny... Uh, he runs like a nerd podcast called Geeks in New York, which wasn't, you know, comedy-based. I figured I was going to talk about... Because I'm into nerd shit, too. Like, I, I like uh, video games and anime and... Um, but comic books suck now because they've ruined that shit with movies. But uh, you I know like, other other stuff uh, like that. Interject. I like comic books right, <laughs> right now. I like the current product. Uh, I I never much I'm much of a reader. I just watch those like Spider Man, X Men cartoons. Yeah, me too. I love them. But so I did. I have a lot of Spider Man stuff. Spider Man's my favorite superhero. Me too. Have everyone fun. everyone shits on Spider Man. This whole room is uh this the color palette I went with was Spider Man. So I just noticed you that, notice, the red and blue. Red, white, and blue, and black. Dude, oh. you must drag so much pussy in here. This uh, is <laughs> just, I don't tell him about the Spider-Man thing until the deed is done. <laughs> I'm like, but that's the thing. It's not so obvious. Like, this thing is kind of obvious, but everything else is kind of subtle. But yeah, I don't tell him, like, so this room, it's, uh, I'm a grown man in my 30s. It's a Spider-Man it's a motif. Spider-Man you know what's great theme. is your, your, everything on your desk, your phone charger, your computer, your phone case is red, and then you get random blue straws and blue and lighters, blue, lighters. <laughs> blue yeah. Paramount cigarettes. It's a Spider-Man phone Apollo, case, excuse me. But yeah, I do. Uh, I kind of, I kind of live that way. I like red and blue things, so I just keep buying them. This chair is blue. It's got some blue on it. But uh, <clears throat> you're one of the guys. I think I've seen you from like when you very first started to to now, right? I think so. Yeah. I, I remember seeing you when I was first coming around. Yeah, and um, I definitely think, like, you're, uh, it's good. It's good to see you stuck with it, because, like, sometimes you see guys, and you're like, oh, that guy's going to be funny if he keeps doing it. Like, you were funny, you don't get me wrong, but, like, mm-hmm. everyone's the same when they start. Like, you got, like, one good bit, and then, like, six, five, six weird things that are leading to the one good bit. But I was like, man, he's, it's good, it's cool to see guys get better and better and better every year, and now you're becoming, like, a professional, which is, like, even cooler uh, so just so people know, Mike's like a. We went right into talking about serious shit, but Mike's like a fucking hilarious comic, and you're doing good. You feel like you're getting any you, the respect you deserve? <laughs> yeah, I get, I get no respect. Uh, I'm gonna do <laughs> I it. got no respect. I had a danger field thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think so. Uh, for a while, I didn't. I mean, it was just angry in the Boston scene. But it's also, I, th- I, th- I think that's just naturally part of. Because you know, comic. Zach A was on last yeah. week. <laughs> a lot of people brought a lot of new listeners in. Shout out uh, to Zach A. No, well, actually, I listened Update to that episode, coming. and and a lot of Update the shit. Coming soon. A lot of the shit I've seen Zach around, and uh, I felt like around about Zach the way you did that yeah. people were blowing him out of proportion. Me too. Uh, that I he's mean, just yeah. a young guy trying to do stand up, and because all that anger he felt, I, f- I felt the same thing. I yeah. just didn't. I just didn't scream. I had some of that too. Stage. I had. I definitely <laughs> had some of that too, and I definitely went through. I mean, I feel it about not just comedy in Boston, the comedy as a whole. Sometimes you're like, fuck, you want to like rattle the cage. And, and well, I just pissed. I felt like such an outsider because you, you, it was so clicky, and I was this. There's more Boston guys doing it now than when I started. Hell when yeah! When I started, I was like 
the only local guy at my level. Everyone yeah. was from other places or from the suburbs, and they were all. Um, there was no Southie guys. It was all very like nerdish, which I, I like nerdy shit too. Yeah. But I also I also like getting laid. Yeah. yeah I also yeah. like uh, doing fun. I I just don't limit myself to one thing. Me neither. Um, other than, other than when it comes to painting my room. <laughs> You can you can be multiple things. You don't have to be one. Yeah. Because uh, I've I've had that conversation with I remember this conversation with another comic who was like an open mic comic and he goes he was talking to me about Game of Thrones and he goes you know in the books and I was like oh yeah I know I read the books and he's like you read the books and I was like it's like yeah they're not a difficult read I read Shakespeare for fun and he goes oh. Uh, I don't know. I just pictured you this big Southie dude. And I'm like, you know, we have books there, right? Yeah. Like, you just cross the Fourth Street Bridge and they just spontaneously combust into flame. Yeah. Every day when you come home, you get hit in the head so you forget everything <laughs> you learn on the outside. But the, I, I'm I'm sort of guilty of that sometimes too in comedy because you judge a dude by his act or by like the character that you just think like. Yeah. Because even like, you know, people from the radio you think are a certain way and then you meet them and you're like, oh, they're not really like that. But Well, but, when you met me outside Nick's, you were like, oh, you're actually, I told you about all my fucking pain and suffering. And you're yeah. like, oh, you're actually interesting. I should have you on the podcast. <laughs> you're you're a demented, tortured soul. Well, it's, that, that is kind of true because I was like, I mean, I, I mean, I'd, I never really thought about it too much. I actually had the opposite thought. I was telling this, I was telling Pat who's in the next room. It's kind of like my my girlfriend almost we talk about everything <laughs> was like, who's the big spoon um still working it out switching it up um is that fucking up uh one of no, them i think my leg just kicked it oh, okay one of the mics is, is i thought it was this one that's why i gave it to myself but um uh what was i saying oh yeah so i was like i remember coming back from that i was like I think we were going to do the podcast the next couple of days and then we, we just delayed it. But I was like, oh, Mike's going to come over. I was like, he's got a lot going on. Like I go, I, I go, he's got a lot of the same problems that me and you have. Cause me and Pat both have like anxiety real bad. I know? have horrible anxiety. Um, I, I think it got, it, it definitely got bad. I never used to have until I started doing stand up. Yeah. Which really sucks. Cause I want to do stand up. Yeah. And it makes me horribly anxious. Uh, but it also got, I think it got worse when I stopped drinking. I yeah. Think when you get rid of that numb feeling, yeah, and then you start feeling shit again. Yeah, like, I think so. It's I get uh, it bad when I smoke weed. I go weird. Like I've had like I'm pretty. I'm in a. It's been pretty good lately, but I'm I'm never like completely. You, you're never safe. You're never totally safe from it. It crops up, especially when I'm like eating shitty foods and like taking bad care of myself. That's when I know. Dude, really I just blurt shit out. Like yeah. like I'll, my girlfriends. So my girlfriend's an entomologist, as you know, and she's yeah. on the other side of the room. Yeah, what is that, a bug doctor? But, uh, she studies bugs. She's a bug scientist. <laughs> a bug and she's scientist. Puni- she's Put it in English <laughs> for me, man. Let, let me simplify this well for you, listeners. Uh, we don't all read Shakespeare for yeah. fun. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> That's my least favorite line in any script what's that like put it in english like when a guy comes in and he's like we need to destroy scientist, the nuclear yeah. missile and the and this the president's like put it in english for me guys doc. it's always yeah, doc. doc and then they're like we need to blow the shit out of them and they're like, yeah <laughs> let's do it i don't speak this fancy liberal word <laughs> put it in american <laughs> so yeah she's an entom- entomologist and she'll just be pinning moths and i'll just if i especially if i smoked i'll just be all of a sudden, you'll just hear, oh! and she's like, what? And I'm like, nothing, just had an anxious thought. Just trying, to, just trying to scream that thing back down into the depths where it came from. What are the, what, what's your anxiety? Dude, Mine is health anxieties. That's anything. Like, yeah. like I'll, have a, I'll, I'll just be sitting there, and I'm like, oh, remember that time when that kid started shit with me? That Puerto Rican kid in fifth grade, and you bitched me out, and I didn't yeah. do shit. And then I'll just be like, oh, why didn't I do something? Why didn't I punch him in the face? Why was I so afraid of a fight at 10? I know like what you stuff, mean. And, and it'll be st- oh, just something like, why didn't I, uh, why didn't I get an argument? Just regrets. regrets. Or I'll get anxious about things that might happen. I'll yeah. just imagine something Of course, something that's the number one. That's then, what anxiety really is fear of the future. Yeah. The, well, yeah. yeah and then uh, trying to be grounded in the present yeah, is what yeah. helped me so much with, with mental shit. Same here. Do you meditate? That's my big thing. No, I've had, I think yeah. I talked to you about oh, this. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I, 
I convinced myself for a long time that I couldn't, and that's yeah. bullshit. I know that I can. I just yeah. have to find a way to get myself over that first hump to where I can shut shut off my brain or put I'll myself send you some. Peace. I'll send you some links. I struggle struggle with uh, turning off my brain. Of course, that's what it's. That's what it is. It's like a, it trains you slowly. It's slow. It's not a fucking quick fix. People think it's gonna be like they're gonna meditate for like five days and be like, oh, all my problems are solved. It's like it's like anything. It takes months and then to to start seeing like real results from it but it's helped me a lot with like those kind of like when i start running away with like a thought it trains you to kind of be like don't think like that you know you're just yeah. you're just letting the beast like run wild right now like control your control your thoughts you know yeah it feels like whenever i tackle one thing another demon pops its head up and i'm like yeah. but it's just because you might not have noticed it like i, I dealt yeah. with i had been progressively dealing with anger but the problem was is that as i like I graduated college during the recession. Yeah, uh, me too. As a kid, every I went to school on loans. I couldn't find a job. I couldn't pay them off. Yeah, all that bullshit that I felt like I had been fed about. Oh, you just work hard and everything yeah. comes to you as long as you have a college degree. Yeah, was yeah, just yeah. nonsense. And then I realized my parents don't know shit. Yeah, I, a bunch of people who didn't know anything led me down this path. It is scary. And That's then, a then, scary realization everyone comes to when you're oh, like, yeah. oh my god, my parents are just average people like everyone. Oh, absolutely. And, and then, then fucking, yeah, I was saddled. They don't with all have all the debt. answers. I was been poor for my entire adult life not yeah. that i had anything when i was a kid and then just didn't you win that weight loss challenge this year? i did i did but now that, that, it's not like that money doesn't like a thousand bucks immediately right? go away you know it's like a, <laughs> i know i gotta pay something off that's the sad thing about being an adult is like the nut every oh month. yeah i got that and then my girlfriend's car got towed when i was outside work after i borrowed <laughs> it and they destroyed the transmission and i was like oh that was nice oh that was nice that was yeah. a good two days that's that's how it works <laughs> <laughs> But I've, I've just learned to laugh at that stuff. Yeah. Like, and anger was just realizing, I, I'm just mad that the world and people and things are a way I don't like them and I can't change yeah. it. That's what anger is. I the have, second I realize I can't change it, I'm just like, oh, what am I angry about? I have noticed that like you carry, even like you look a little different, you carry yourself a little different in the past like six months or so. Like, you seem like you're in a much better place yeah like, I'm not that i was worried state. about you really ever but i I had just been beaten down by a lot of things yeah you looked like almost me. like you were like physically hunched, hunched over, over oh absolutely and whiter like pale or people shit. used to ask me like why don't you put your head up and i was like <laughs> i don't know i went to these gang ridden schools so i just put, kept my head down and i wanted to pretend like yeah i wasn't there you know and then i went to high school i went to high school in southie and everyone's like who are you I've never seen you at Gate of Heaven. <laughs> what do you go to school with the fucking dockies? People in Southie are fucking nuts like that, man. But it was. It do you was, know someone so on this street? Uh, I don't know. Well, and you're not real. Even though I, I grew up here my whole life, but it was always it was always one thing to another. Always being an outsider. Did so you did you finish the Bobby Kelly podcast story? Did we even finish that? Uh no, I don't think we did. Yeah, may, yeah, we better finish that. Some, uh, someone is like right now listening is like, thank no, you. I did I did Deep Pooh's podcast, and he had just quit Bobby's show, and he was like, oh, we're gonna talk about it, and I was like. Oh, I guess so. I, 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 yeah. I don't really have an option here. So he brought it up. And thankfully, when Bobby, so Deepu videotaped and Bobby saw my face and he goes, look at this kid in the middle. That's the look of someone who's being dragged into something he doesn't want anything to do with. And I just talked out of my ass about comedy as a nobody, which, yeah. you know, uh, I was, I assumed that this was not going to the masses of the world. Yeah. This, yeah. this was going to be heard by 15 On a people. small podcast. You know, small. it was brand new and it wasn't, it wasn't even supposed to be comedy related stuff. Yeah. It was just, dude, I talked about and Pokemon. And new to doing podcasts I, I, too. I, like, I debated the other kid about the new Pokemon games for about 15 minutes yeah. and the new combat mechanics. And then we strolled into this and I'm yeah, like, yeah, you guys yeah. are, and then, uh, but, uh, so they aired that clip cause Deepwood left and yeah. they proceeded to, you know, just. I'm sure their Some fans were snitching you out too. Like, uh, and I was <laughs> like, I was at, I just got, I found out about it a week before, so I just got anxious. You know, anxiety went nuts. <laughs> I remember that's you when I saying that. You. I remember you saying that. I was like, that's rough that they told you like it's gonna be out in a week. And then it happened. I was like, oh, this is just funny shit, you know? And, yeah. And I remember it, getting your call. I was like, I felt bad, but I was like, I think, I think I was like, you'll probably end up going on his show, and it'll be great. Yeah, publicity is good publicity, yeah. even if it's. You know? And when I the episode came out, myself. I listened to it. I went on a hike and listened to it. I remember really? that. I remember it like very clearly. And at the beginning, I was like, "Oh, like they're they're like ripping them." But then, like you saved your own ass, like because you just said shit that was actually true. And then they were like, "Oh, I'm kind of starting to agree with this kid. <laughs> kind of starting to agree with them." I think their first two things, they were like, they couldn't take him. 
at face value because they were like, who is this guy? And yeah, then just, you said enough things nobody. that they were like, ah. I remember Soder especially was kind of like, oh, I'm now I'm starting to like this guy. Yeah, that's what Dan Crone said to me the other day about yeah. when Soder at the end goes, oh, I like his voice. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah oh, you know, God. it's like, it's like, and then you got on, how, how did it go when you were on You Know What, dude? It went all right. I mean, I was just... It's tough it, to get a word in on that Yeah, show. it's because I was on That's with Bobby and Dante Nero, and they're both alpha male dudes. Yeah. I mean, I think I am too, but I'm also years behind them in comedy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, if I say anything, I'm just going to be told to Comedy's shut up. got that weird... Such a dude, it's like a union. Yeah. I feel like I'm in my labor union and everyone's like, what, what list are you on? How long have you had your card? What's your seniority? Yeah. I've, I've come to, you can, I mean, the people, there's episodes of this podcast, dude, where it's a straight hour of me just complaining. About, oh, I know. That's why I don't always yeah. listen to them because yeah. I, I complain enough myself. Yeah. And there's straight, but especially like when I was featuring and trying to get into headlining and stuff and I felt like I was like killing all the time mm-hmm. and like not making very much money and I, there would be episodes where I was like so upset about that. You know what I mean? Well, that's where so much of my anger came from was yeah. just trying so hard at everything in life and feel like I was killing myself and working yeah. and making all the right decisions and just never getting anything in any, yeah. just never pay off in any aspect of my life. Not scary. And, uh, but it happens. I mean, cause I remember listening to your podcast a couple of years ago and you were complaining about some shit gig you did in like New Hampshire, Maine, and I was just jealous. I was like, "Fucking Noonan, I'd be so happy to do that gig." <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I but was... that's how it is. I'm sure someone would. I remember complaining about some gig I did, and some open mic was like, well, "You should get booked, man." Yeah, no, it's true. I Every, be, you got to remember that, like at all. There's times. always someone beneath you who's hungry, who yeah, who looks at it. looks at the. <laughs> you know, you're eating a meal that you think is a pittance, and this guy's like, I'll just eat table scraps. I turned down, like, my first... I turned down, like, a commercial for the first time this year, and I felt kind of like that about it. I was like, what are you doing? The old you would never turn down, like, a Yeah, thing. but that's the point of moving up. Yeah. Is the ability to finally say, I don't need that like I used to. Yeah, and it's... That's that feeling that Sometimes that you, you just know it's going to be a shitty thing. And you need to... Uh, you, that anxiety is hard to get over. It yeah. really is, because you feel like you're losing a work ethic, and you're getting soft. Yeah. Yeah. And man, you're like, maybe that's why I'm not doing as good. I'm being a fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. you're like, oh, no. No, I've worked my ass off, so I don't have to do that. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. don't have to go drive to the Berkshires for five unpaid minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shit like that, like, I don't know. It's all relative, like, but I was, I did a show last night. I did that Jed's Basement show, and there was, mm-hmm. a, there was like, a dude, like, who was like, do you ever, he said, he said something like, do you do stuff now that you know the old you would have just like freaked out, like knowing that it has happened, like, you know, being doing big theaters and like opening for famous people or whatever, anything, even going on the road was like a total dream of mine. Like when I was doing open mics at the very beginning and he goes, do you do that stuff and think that it's not what you thought it would be? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yes, it's depressing mm-hmm. as fuck. Like it's super depressing to achieve something and go like, Wow, that was just, it was good, but it was just as like fleeting and as anything It never else. is, man. Yeah, it's everything. Your, uh, it's, it's sort of it's, part it's, of life. But it's, I, I think I realized that getting sober and dealing with other shit, that it's, it's you're just chasing a horizon. And yeah. You, you chase the horizon, you get to that next piece yeah. of land or whatever, and it's not as good as you thought. And it doesn't fill that hole, and you go to the next one and the next one and the next one. It doesn't. It's true. And, and I also feel like in comedy, especially every step up, you look back at the step you were just on with like a little bit of like uh, longing. Like those yeah. were those were the good times. I was talking to this, <laughs> this New York guy who works in some podcasts for bigger name comics. And he was telling me about their anxiety and stuff and having to deal with them. And I was like, still at their point? And he's like, dude, oh, it's, dude. it doesn't go away or change. They're still just as worried about listenership mm-hmm. at that stage as you are way down here at the bottom. A- absolutely. And I listen, I've opened for some guys that I really was like, if I could just get to where he is, I'd be happy. You know what I mean? And then you op- you work with him and you're like, he's fucking miserable. And it freaks you out because you're like, am I ever going to be? That- that's why I've been more like, I've been more relaxed lately because I sort of just was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep putting stuff out and like see what happens. And I not, almost mind fucked myself much. this year about comedy too because like I, this is what I've been doing for I don't know, maybe seven or eight years at least. Yeah. First couple of years, I was really drinking, and I just didn't know. I didn't get comedy, so I wasn't hitting it hard. Yeah. And then I, um, I was like, oh, I, I got into comedy for two reasons. Pussy. Pussy. 
uh, and, and dick. money. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that too. P- <laughs> pussy and twink booty. <laughs> Those two things. And and I've I done done well in the twink booty. And I'm way Facebook better in the gay boards. range than I am in the straight range. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, no, I remember thinking. And then I'm like, I'm in a relationship now. Yeah. So I'm happy. So so that thing isn't. I remember thinking, oh, just go on the road and just meet girls. Yeah, and yeah. Just That's you know, right. none of that shit ever. And get happened. fucked up, and then and then <laughs> you look at it and it's like, oh, I've I've already realized that that doesn't make me feel better. Yeah, that I'm yeah. chasing something. And then I was like, oh, damn. Like if if I know, I'm realizing now that I'm just chasing a horizon, and comedy isn't going to be that that thing that saves me. I'm going to have to develop that on my own. Yeah. And it kind of just messed up my entire. Um, yeah, it's true. It's a th- thing going on in my head, but then I was like, "But this is what I do. It's one of the only. It's the only way I do. I want to make a living." Yeah, if you find honestly, like, it's so corny, but I've found pride in just like the show itself, like writing good shit, performing good shit. If you make yeah. that the focus of like what you Absolutely. live and die with, like things will go well on as their l- own. As long the as I can be funny itself, and I can do the do this be. God, I'm trying to say this and not a douche. Are you afraid that Bobby Kelly's going to put this on a show no matter what you say? No, <laughs> Do you no. ever do that now that you've done? Because I've never been on a podcast that has been made fun of on another podcast. Yeah, I think that was a unique it's situation. It's a fear that I've had before, especially on this one. Like, I'm like, man, I was a real... Because I've put out episodes where I'm like, oh, straight whiny bitch. No, because I'm, like, I'm not bad mother anyone. I've got no... Bobby was, was nice to me and we talked no, and chilled just, and stuff. I know. But it was... Uh, I know Mike. <laughs> Mike Bain. <laughs> But but no, it did that did that kind of anxiety did fuck with me. Yeah, for, for a, that would fuck period. with anyone though. Some of the shit you got to go through in comedy is really like no one will ever know. Like, remember when I did Gotham? It was this like live first television national television thing I would ever did, and it was live. And my girlfriend had just broken up with me two days before, and I was engagement ring shopping at the time. Like I had no idea this was coming. I was a complete, like, mess. And I remember, like, I was, like, in the corner, like, in a dark corner of the club, like, knowing I was going on this, like, live thing in front of, like, millions of channels, millions Mm -hmm. of viewers or whatever. And I was, like, I was, like, man, no one, (laughs) like, no one knows what this feels like. It's, like, a fucking lonely, terrifying moment, kind of. No, especially is, because, like, I, I... uh, for people listening to this, I, my other job, I work as a stage, and it was essentially a roadie that stays in the city, and when a concert or a theater production comes in, I do... Yeah, you set do up, work. like, big, big fucking things. And Kendrick so when you, Lamar. Yeah, I did to Tom Petty, Kendrick Lamar, I'm doing, like, a theater wicked show tonight. Huge the, shit at Foxborough, the, too, right? um, Yeah, at all the major stadiums, and, uh, but when, when you watch, like, the music guys go up there, if you're part of a band, you fail as a band. There's yeah. four or five of you failing. When you're a comic... You walk off stage, and that's just sitting in you. That's yeah. just your failure. Yeah. And then you you look for for things and people to blame, or and it's moment to moment that the, that failure could come at any second. Like you can feel it when you're talking. You're like, I'm losing them. I'm losing them. I'm losing them. Like get them mm-hmm. back with the punchline. And then if the punchline's not as good as you thought, it's like playing this like crazy game that's like very intense and second by second. There's nothing worse than when you know you're bombing. It's not because the it's not cause of anything specific. It's because of you. <laughs> just, it's just that you don't like me as a person. <laughs> <laughs> like your bits are like they're laughing like ha 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 at your at your fucking written bits, but yeah. like there's something about you they just don't like. I feel it. like as <laughs> as I get better as a comic, it's just because I'm talking about myself. This is yeah. I might be talking about race or politics, but I'm talking about how it affects me. Well, why that's my opinion on it, what what my aspect of life is, or I'm telling stories from my life. And before, when you're just making a dumb joke about Jersey Shore, which was my whole yeah. first five minutes, I never have anything on the line. It yeah. goes, oh, they didn't like my joke about that. Same then here. When they don't like it, it's like, oh, they really didn't like that joke Oh yeah, where I talked about I banged that hooker and the condom broke. All com- and, that's, <laughs> and then all that shame comes back. <laughs> all, the, all the comics, like go through that phase like you can see it so clearly on a show that has like mixed like guys who have just started and guys who have been doing it 10 years like Mm -hmm. you see it so clearly like from just the way a guy who's been doing it 10 you know nine or 10 years like takes the mic out of the stand and starts talking compared to a guy who's been doing it two years somebody just said that to me super clear where they were like they saw me at nick's and they were like oh dude you didn't stand up there like you had a plank up your ass like used to and i was like (laughs) Yeah, that's always those, <laughs> those great compliments yeah, you get that, that from are, our fellow comics that, that are, are like, always you used like to a suck, but now you're great. It's always a slam inside of a compliment. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know. All right. So you mentioned the hooker thing. I mean, I've been mean, we've been like talking like you should come on. You should come on for like fucking ever. But it takes forever, especially. But now that I got this place, it's easier to do interviews now. It's like because mm-hmm. I can tell people just like come here. We'll pop in and do it. No one wanted to go anywhere else. But uh, but the sex addiction stuff was like what really like piqued my interest because I'm such like <laughs> a fucking vanilla Catholic uh, raised. I've heard your jokes. You're not that vanilla. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm not super vanilla. But you you might be in comparison to a pig like me. <laughs> but as far as your average human being goes, no, nah, yeah, yeah. I've, 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 you're a little off the beaten path. I've had my adventures. Yeah, I've had some adventures. I mean, stand up kind of leads you to that too. Anyway, when you're you're hanging out in bars and clubs and with weirdos, you yeah, you eventually kind of find yourself. If I wasn't a drinker at one point in my life, I probably wouldn't be as adventurous now because I did so much crazy shit drunk, like that. You know, and then you realize, like, wow, the world didn't stop turning because I had like a threesome. So I guess that's yeah. an okay thing. I remember I had my first threesome, and I was like, you know, I got that feeling when I, you know, you talk. We were just talking about comedy, and I said chasing the rise, and I was yeah. like, that wasn't the fucking end all be all thing I thought it was gonna be. Uh-oh, I don't yeah. feel like the. I felt good. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna sit yeah. here and be one of those. Oh, the fucking it sucked. But. I thought that I was going to sprout wings and fly across the sky like, like yeah, an angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, thought, I was like, I thought, oh, it's just, just me. Just me and this penis. I thought like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought um, it was going to be, first of all, I thought it was going to be like a porno and it wasn't. And I thought it was going to be, ruins. I thought it was going to be like, uh, I don't know. I remember when my, one of my nieces, this is weird to make an, a reference to my niece in this disgusting story, but like, I remember when one of my nieces turned like four, three or four, whatever age where a kid is Jesus, like, dude, this just keeps getting worse. No, 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 <laughs> but you'll get it in a second. I remember, I think, whatever whatever age they're old enough to, like, talk and, like, be people, little people, she was blowing out the candle on her birthday cake, right? And she she looked, like, terrified to do it. Like, she looked, like, scared to do it. Like, oh, here it comes. Like, here comes the moment. She blew it out, and then she, like, braced herself. And she actually thought that, like, you grew a year, like, on your birthday. She thought she was going to blow that candle out and, like, grow and, mm-hmm. like, turn two or turn turn four yeah. and be, like, physically bigger. And I think that's how I felt. That was such <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> metaphor. I'm so glad that you just ruined that memory <laughs> of, of your niece <laughs> in comparison to, 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 to coming. To threesomes. <laughs> yeah, because I, I thought after the threesome I was just going to, like, be a little more ripped and a little oh, more yeah. sexy. And you ever a see a two-year-old th- blow out a candle? Dude, it's the same thing when you blow a load right after you have sex with two skags. It's fucking exactly the same, kid. <laughs> but, like, so, but you were talking, like, because that day you seemed to be in, like, almost like, you were like, ah, oh, it's fucking shit. It's fucking sex addiction shit. It's yeah, me down. Just, uh, like it every... was bombing you out that day, and I had no fucking idea that you had any of that going on. Well, you... I knew you had a little issue with drinking because you told me you were quitting. I'm more than a little, but I like, <laughs> but like, then you started opening up, and I was like, Bane's got fucking levels, and you don't, you definitely. I had like a thousand conversations with you, but it was always just kind of about what, whatever, we, who's up next, what's going on, like <laughs> shitting on Southie people or something. But, like, uh, you never never let me into that part of your life. Well, I didn't know you that well. I, I'm not one of those dudes who just walks up to someone and dumps my whole thing on their yeah, lap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see people do that so Most much. Most comics are and, like that. And I'm just like, I never came from that environment. And I always, I was always my burdens on my own. I don't burden other people with my Very bullshit. Very Boston Irish. I, and, uh, it sounds like a line from a Dennis Lane. It was, uh, it's, <laughs> it's funny. That, that was one of the first things I had to realize because I would walk, like, I would walk home in the rain. <laughs> In the pouring rain after working like a 12-hour shift, I wouldn't let my girlfriend give me a ride. I wouldn't let people I work with give me a ride. I'm like, I don't take favors. Everything in my life, I got on my John own. John Paul's like that, too. John I, uh, Paul Rivera's like that. It's, he, it's spent a a night in Prov- he spent a night in Rhode Island in a fucking Dunkin' Donuts instead of calling someone for it's, help. It's a trust issue. It's a, it's, I can't, if <laughs> it's I do a little bit of a pride someone, thing, too, though. It's, so it's, you can say, like, I never asked for help from anybody. Yeah, that's part of it. And then part of it's like, if, if I do some, someone does something for me, I then owe them something, which yeah. is a sign that you've had some kind of fucked up relationships as, as a kid with people yeah. that you're afraid <laughs> that now I'm indebted to someone for a favor. Yeah. Or it was also like if... Uh, I know a lot of people who grew up in Saudi that have fucked up like ideas of 
interactions with other people. Oh, dude, I like was I was built for a society built on violence <laughs> as a means to handle things. Yeah, a long and then ago. I got out into the world and I was like, I'm not. I I feel like I'm a blueprint for something that exists within this certain. Um, you know, arcane area that yeah. no one else knows about, and I can't. I'm struggling. That was a huge thing for me in comedy because I remember I was like, I won't I think be a you comedian. Mean archaic, right? Because arcane is like witchcraft, or is that well, what you it, mean? arcane is also means esoteric. It's uh, it's something unknown by the right, majority of people. I I'm gonna go with witchcraft, Mike. My <laughs> it, place. It, you see, it, <laughs> no, you're right. they use that shit for like arcane spells. When trying to get World trying to get Bane on vocab. Don't play. It's you can mess me up, dude. I've got stuff that I try. I read a lot and I write down words and I'm like, I like this word. I'm gonna use yeah. this in my vocabulary. And not all of them I fucking fully vetted. So <laughs> do you, you keep plugging away. You're gonna get me on. One of them. I do it. I do that. Everyone does that. It's just, you know, you gotta you gotta take these things for a test drive. But I thought I was when I got into stand up. I was like, I can't be a comic until I'm ready to fight every dude in that room. Wow. So when I went, I remember when I first went to grandma's basement and I'm like, these guys are half my size. Yeah. Like in my group of friends, I'm, I'm like the, the weakest one or one of the weaker ones. Unless yeah. like, and I, I, I'm a dude who's been in a handful <laughs> of fights and I'm not afraid to fight people. Yeah. Yeah. So when I went there, I felt like a thug. Yeah. It was insane. Cause then I was like, Oh, these guys just, I felt they don't, ha- I felt ex- handsome. They don't expect, <laughs> And clean. I feel like I don't smell. I've never felt it so hygienic when you go to an open mic. Yeah. When I was like an actor, when I was trying to be an actor and hanging out with actors before I did stand up, I was like Paul Giamatti. People were like, (laughs) Will's a character guy. He plays all the characters. I'd always get cast as like a drug addict friend or something like that. And then I did comedy and people started being like, you're too handsome for comedy. I was like, which is it, motherfuckers? I'm a bear. I'm a, I'm like an average. I'm like a very average looking Irish guy, I feel like from Boston. But you, con- I saw your old headshot. You had such a fucking potato face. Oh, oh my yeah, god, yeah. you look like all my off the boat Irish friends. <laughs> yeah, I didn't lose that until I don't really, notice I was it now. Until I quit drinking when yeah. I was like twenty six. You lost that puffiness lost that all puffy, the, uh, the Irish puff. have. Well, I thought that's what I looked like. That's just that, that's just a suds. I thought that was just my creature. face, but it was like it was like eighteen to from eighteen on. I was a beer drinker. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Now I'm a runner. Yeah, no, I I so thought I'm running today, and Kevin Hart's voice plays in my running app. He's really? like, "Keep on going, go and get it." Right? <laughs> and I was like, you know how he just got caught cheating on his wife? Like, I didn't read. I, I saw like the title of the headline. I, didn't I thought read it'd be it. funny if it was like, "You don't need to go all the way around that corner. Just cut that corner. <laughs> <laughs> just take take a little break." Oh, that bitch ain't gonna find out. Yeah, she no one find out if you just do a half mile instead of a mile. It's between you and me. You and Kev, <laughs> little Kev. The it was a racist impression, but. Oh, that wasn't bad. That was that was a Kevin Hart impression. It was a Kevin Hart. Black I mean, it, I do. It, it like makes me because it they change it, they update it all the time. It's not always Kevin Hart. Sometimes it's like a <laughs> fucking runner that I've never heard of. It's like my name's Jake Tance, and I'm like the fucking fastest man in North America. <laughs> I'm like all right, but uh, anyway, but anyway. So you were talking about we were all like kind of trading. I think we were all trading stories about like debaucherous things we've done oh yeah i mean i just spent just crushed a, it. a long time <laughs> getting into i was a virgin until i was 22 i think what so i was a so i like i said i went to these rough schools as a kid and then i went to this high school which is a small school it was just in in my neighborhood and then i graduated with 17 kids 100 kids in my high school wow um, what was the high school so now it's called Boston Collegiate Charter School. It used to be South Boston Harbor Academy. How'd you end up there? Was it like a... It's a charter school. So it's a lottery. So it was either that or I was going to have to go through the public, Boston public school system. You got in because you're a smart dude, right? No, no. It's just a lottery. They pick really? names out of a... They put names in like one of those bingo things and they roll it and they pull out a name. Yeah. And if you're one of the lucky ones, uh, you don't have to go... You can take a chance on going to a new school that may not suck... Yeah. Otherwise, you go to those schools where you know you're never going to get an education. You don't have a chance in life. It's uh, very Hunger Games ish. And uh, <laughs> if, but if you if you if you got pulled, your siblings could come too. So it was, oh. and everyone would you'd go, you families would just sit in a room. There should be like a room that. full of poor inner city uh, Irish, Italian, Black, uh, Caribbean, Asian families just waiting and praying that their kid's name got pulled, so they could get out of going to a Boston public high school where they're just so overcrowded and And, um, dangerous. I I went there and I was used to be fat. I was a fat bastard in high school. Really? Yeah. How fat? Can can you compare yourself to somebody? uh, I don't know. I was 235 pounds. I'm like 175 right now. Um, So like just a little husky. 
I don't know, man. I had some meat on me. It was definitely, it was no, I was fat. Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't much of an athlete. I never played sports. And, um, never. No, I played, I played lacrosse for a Boston. Just to, just pu- for, just for the rape. For a Boston public <laughs> school team. We would, we used to travel around in these broken down school buses and we would go out to these, these 300 year old prep schools. Uh, where they would have locker rooms. You could walk down the hallways and they'd have pictures of their kayak teams and their crew teams and their uh, shooting teams and then wear oh, just yeah. a bunch of dirt balls. We're the only team that has black kids on our team. And we <laughs> couldn't win a game. for life. Our, our pads are falling apart. Yeah. They hated us so bad. And uh, I did that because all of my friends were like, dude, sign up. And I was like, you know, every now and then... I'll be like, I need change. I'll try new things. Even when I was really afraid of different stuff. And I put myself in situations where I knew I would be uncomfortable to force myself to be a better person. Yeah. And then everyone backed out and I won't quit something once I start. Once I start something, I follow it all the way through. Yeah. Uh, and so I just kept doing it and I was horrible. I was brutal. But <laughs> So do you feel like that's why you had the balls to do this some of these because some of these like sex things you were talking about were like are straight dangerous and like I scary never, situations i never even thought about it because i like i said so i i finally lost my virginity uh at like 21 or 22 i can't about well, it's, that age it's a pretty good story right well see see i have two <laughs> stories and i i have the story that i told everyone and then the other one which i told later on because originally i just found a hooker out of the old Phoenix newspaper, which was, for those of you listening, it was back page, except it was a newspaper. It was physically a back page. And I would just pick it up and I would go to the back and they'd have just, (laughs) they'd have your section for hookers and then they'd have your section for transgender hookers and I'd be like, oh, what's this? This is a part of the paper, by the way, which sometimes you'd read the Phoenix on the subway and realize you were like folding it a certain way where you were just showing like mm-hmm. hookers to people and they did porn reviews in there i remember my mother caught me reading and she i was reading she she walked in right when i'm looking through the the transsexual escort uh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i'm like oh camila nine inches fully functional well that's <laughs> that's good that still works and that, but i would uh yeah some of their dicks don't function huh? no estrogen messes that up uh, Conjunction but, function. Yeah. <laughs> My penis is ninety percent function. <laughs> the uh, just the head's a little soft. I just went and I met up with this, and it was first time I realized what switch and bait meant. What's like, that mean? Switch and bait. No, I mean I'm saying it. bait and switch is what I meant to say. Yeah, you got, got well, you on one. You look, <laughs> you look at the ads, and it you see a picture, and you get there, and it's oh, not yeah, the girl, yeah. and she That's was just like one. this old New England lady, and it was just like. Uh, what so what was the ad? What was the ex- expectation long, versus reality? Long legs, mature, <laughs> redhead, and I had a thing for older girls and redheads, and uh, even though I'm a ginger myself, but I, yeah. I for a while I would meet. They call older. that the Weasley in the hooker biz. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, that's, Two I was in fucking. Amsterdam, right? And I'm walking through the red light district with my friend. And this chick, this Dutch girl, peeks her head out and with like a British accent goes, I'm ready for you, ginger. <laughs> and I look at my friend. I'm like, dude, I got to fuck this girl now. Like, I, I got to. She's she just ready for she, it. She just called me ginger in a street full of people. I had to go in there and bang her, you know. So you did. Oh, yeah. I mean, I had been in Amsterdam for two weeks and I had blown through a lot of money. My friend was in the, was going to school there for law school and he was his school was in the red light district so he'd be like i get class for three hours want (laughs) to hang out and i would like you go to class i'm gonna go make myself and i would just hit up cafes and uh weed cafes and bars and drink heineken and i would just go through the red light district and just see girl after girl after girl in the same day like i bang like five in a day in a day oh i was an animal i was i'd never I, I my stamina Damn, that's a was voracious on, sexual appetite. It was it was insane. I, I it, there were see that was my thing at wow, times. Wow, that's felt, by the way. Just I gotta stop you for a second. That's a lot because like a lot of guys. <laughs> that I like that. I like that you had no because just my personality. I do one and be like, well, that was well. How do I feel about that? I gotta sleep on this. I never. What's what's up with I me? I never felt bad because you know, bang bang um, bang. Like most, it's not. It, I wasn't in some. Uh, I wasn't in like a child brothel in Kathmandu. All right, this wasn't. That's so funny though. Like you could have been that last number five. Yeah. She could have had sex less times than you that day. <laughs> like a hooker. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, I've she, only had sex twice. Well, today. sometimes they would. St- they would have there'd be a day shift and then a night shift yeah. and then a third shift. Because <laughs> I remember, I met this Asian girl and we hit it off and for some reason we really like connected. 
Like yeah. it's weird to say that. I know I've told people like, oh, it's because you paid her, but no, I paid her, and we just hung out. Yeah, they're and human beings. Yeah, we fucked several times, and uh, we did a bunch of blow together that she provided, and she she didn't she kept she walked me to the door and kept giving me head on my way to the door. <laughs> like for some reason, <laughs> how does just, that work, dude? I she kept pulling down my pants and reached on, <laughs> and uh, it was because I told my friend I'm running to the store, uh, and I ran to the red light district, and I look, and I'm like, I've been gone for four hours. That is so funny. And dude. my phone doesn't work. He doesn't know where I am. I'm out here doing coke with this Thai prostitute. Um, this is this is good, man. And, this is the kind of stuff. This is why you're here, Bane. I love no, these stories. You. I know. I knew you. You were just everything up until yeah. this point, guys. Was just will dragging the this out of me. I'm but, like that Asian hooker. I was just juggling your balls a little bit. But <laughs> no, it was because that's the thing is that it's not not every woman who does sex work yeah. was was diddled or is some of them might have been some of them are, I'm messed up too. Yeah. I, and I sure as fuck don't judge them. Yeah. Uh, and I've never, most of them haven't judged me, but I would meet, I remember meeting girls off Backpage or, and a lot of people I would just meet off for fuck for free off other psychos like me with sex yeah. addictions off of other sites. So you really, I mean, I'm not a fucking doctor and I really, I know a lot about addiction. I know a lot about alcohol addiction, but I don't know Jack. I wanted to be sex wanted addiction. so bad. But you really, but five times wanted a day, that sounds wanted. a little addictive. What's that? That sounds like addictive behavior. Well, my, my, I just had Running such off. A, for dude, telling. I held it in for so long, for 22 years. That is exploded. a long time, dude. I just, Now, I why had, that long? Like, why, why? You're not a fucking bad looking dude. I didn't know dude. how to talk to women. I yeah. was, I was a fat kid. I didn't know, I didn't just, I didn't get girls. Yeah. I just didn't know how to talk to them. And I remember going to UMass, I went to college out there, which, and dude, everyone got laid. Except for me, I, everyone. Dude, I was the only dude who didn't get laid. I was. Do you go to Amherst? Yeah, I, I went dude, to Am. I went to Zoo Mass. And I, I didn't was, get laid. I was. How old are you? I'm thirty. I'll be yeah. thirty one so next I'm like Sunday. A, I'm a couple years older than you, but I went when I was in New York. My best friend Ramage was going to UMass Amherst. I would take the bus sometimes. Every now and then, you know, I'd just be like, I want to. I'm like nineteen. I want to enjoy a little bit of the college experience. So I would like go from New York, take the bus to Amherst, and just party with him. Mm -hmm. And you know. I'd get laid, man, just one day. The dude, I just didn't know how to talk to girls, and my, my you know what happened is, I, I was nervous. Also, my the story of me being a virgin followed me there. Because oh yeah, how the fuck couple, did that well, happen? Some of the that's kids, the, I that's the danger of a state school. Kids listening. Yep, you had to go to Florida. <laughs> go go to get away else. from people. Go at least a thousand miles away. It is fun because I went to a school where no one. There was only one other guy from Boston in the whole school, and he was two grades ahead of me. Yeah. So it was like I could have. I totally reinvented myself. Like yeah, I I will. I, not I reinvented myself, did. but I just left behind some shit. You know when you're in high school, like you act dumb around your friends so they don't like think you're mm -hmm. too. I went there, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stop acting dumb. I'm just be who I am. I didn't I didn't have that many friends in I started making friends in high school, but it but I have a lot of friends friends now are people that like me and I trust and get along but yeah. for a while like I said I was going to these schools with kids from other neighborhoods I was the only white kid in my class a lot of times I didn't know any people I didn't no one from the neighborhood would talk to me because I, did, I didn't go to the same school as them right. so I was on my own for a while and then <laughs> I, uh, Sad, man. You know, when I went to UMass, I knew a couple kids going there, and I was like, oh, dude, I don't know how, I don't know what to do in this giant situation. Because my whole life, I'm always the new kid who doesn't know anyone. Comedy, school, work, I'm always that odd dude out, and I gotta yeah. fucking make my way. And in when I went there, I was like, oh, at least I know two people. It won't be that bad. And somehow, someone told a new kid we met, and we would just meet people. He'd be like, oh, Bane's a virgin. Just tell uh. him. And it, it followed me. And I used to be, I was like, oh, Women are like me. I want people to treat me nice. I should be nice to women. And my friends would just be such douchebags and yeah. dicks and get laid all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it's nice guys do finish last when it comes to that fucking... Well, they li I do think a girl likes a little bit of it. Like, I try and like... I'm almost like... I'm like a pretzel. I'm a pretzel of nice... With a little bit of salt occasionally, because well, I feel like that's what they want. It's also just good to treat them. Like, I, I talk to so many comics who can't talk to women. I'm like, they're just people, dude. Yeah. They're just people. Like, the way so many guys do sets about women, I'm like, they're just people. Oh, dude. Just talk to them. Like, I heard uh, they, they want the same shit as you do. And that was the thing is, I would never be overly nice to you, Will. I would come in here and I'd treat you like a person. I'd be decent to you, but yeah. we'd bust each other's balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that with them. Yeah, you know, it's the same that means thing. I, ex I respect you as a fucking human being. Yeah, you just got to be r real and be yeah. yourself. And that's that's the thing. That's, have confidence. I, always, I, I didn't have any I was confidence. always, that's one thing I never had a problem with was talking to girls because, uh, 
I had a big sister and a mother, and I just was always kind of like, I, I got that from an early age because just like people are people, like you know what I mean. I never, I didn't talk to them too differently than I talked to my friends. You know See, I, mean? I didn't have, I don't have, I have very few girl like friends that are women, and I, I didn't have my family. I come from a big family, but it's almost all guys. Yeah, so I was, and I grew up in a very alpha male household my dad was in a gang when he was 12 you know he yelled i remember what was the name of his gang i don't know it was just back they have good it was, gangs back then it was before the mob had taken over southie when you just have corner gangs yeah and uh, yeah that's what i'm saying they all had jackets i don't remember but but then it was um like i remember i ran from a fight from three kids from the projects when i was playing in there and my dad saw me and he was he flipped out on me and he he was like if you ever run and it didn't help that they were from a different race he was not happy that I ran from three that's black kind of a kids. racist ah uh, <laughs> just a bit Umpaquito. and uh, <laughs> Umpaquito, which is a, a word he would never yeah. say it's uh there, you know what there's plenty there but that's that's his business I'm not gonna I like that yeah his. I'm not here to fucking um I did I've, I did do the like I uh, I've, I've had my I I mean I used to be pretty racist myself when I was a kid being as yeah my kid I got I was filled with hate you know and in the it most misdirected hate I, I hated myself and I directed it at other people I've and never you, been racist but when I lived in Harlem and it was really poor I was a little racist because I got I got hassled so much by I I definitely black was because you know street. what it is man it, if your experiences with a group of people are almost resoundingly negative yeah every black kid I knew was a kid being the fuck out of me in the bathroom when I went yeah. to the bathroom. That's why cops are um, so angry. And it's the and same racist. thing with like if you're a black kid and your only interaction with white people is that cop who fucking harasses you every other day. Yeah. You're gonna fucking hate white people. I agree. It, it's it, so true. It, that's it, the perfect that's, example. Of, that's where so much of it comes from. And it, you know. Those, and I actually think <clears throat> this is kind of conspiratorial, but I think like it's to keep poor people down like at no, all that's what all I races said. pit us against each other keep us down keep us busy with that if while they all make money it's such a great dividing factor because if 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 poor white people and poor black people realized how much we have in common and yeah. that we're how much they're getting fucked by the same policies and they banded together they could actually change something in this country yeah but, but it's as all long about as as long as you shit. keep keep them fighting each other when in reality they're just people struggling to get through life and yeah. you misdirect their hatred they'll fight one another instead of fighting the powers that be that squash on them I agree it's uh but so back but, to hookers yeah back to <laughs> back to well, I'm gonna get an old duels I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna get another old duels you, want, you don't want one right no nah, man I gotta I, get my water I don't wanna put you on the fucking I don't wanna put any old duels peer pressure on you yeah I don't think I can handle that I might, I might go on a binge yeah go on a binge yeah, I'll be back uh Oh, Will has so much fucking hair, I hate it. I'm, I'm completely bald right now, and Will used to have this pompadour. I didn't like one when I first met him, and I was so fucking jealous. Oh, you... Will, I'm talking about how much I hate your hair. My hair? I'm, you, you don't have it anymore, but you used to have such a... You had, like, Conan O'Brien hair, and as a balding guy who started going bald at 21, I, uh... Yeah. I, uh... I got a lot of that, um... Mike Whitman definitely hated my hair. Like, he's... Just he's jealous. Bald, he's envious. a bald guy. Uh, I'm thinning a little bit though. I'm starting to get older. Go join the club. So I'll get there. Just no. a little, just enough that I notice. No one's really noticed as far as like people, but I'm, yeah. I'm noticing it. Just a little bit. It's like, and then I started looking at every guy I know, even the guys that like have their hair. They're still a little thin out. Mm -hmm. It just thins out a little bit. But yeah, I've been keeping it kind of short for that reason. And I never really had like long hair, like you know, like Tom Cruise does in like The Last Samurai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So beautiful. Never had that. That was my dream that I would have here. I always wanted yeah. here that I could just do a swoosh. Same here. Like one of those white boys in a movie, just. Whoosh. But the thing, I tried to grow my hair long a couple of times, and my hair is just so thick; it always looked like shit. Mine would have been curly. I would have had like a, a yeah. ginger fro. He had a good. You got a good like head for it though for losing hair. Some guys <laughs> don't. That's that's my fear. I'm gonna go bald like in my 40s. I get a nice couple scars under there from when I've had head injuries. I get to show those off. Um. But yeah, I've I've seen two hookers in my life, and both of them were not like they were independent, uh, like kind of doing their own. Yeah, thing although type I think shit. almost everyone I saw was. And the one I and the old first one was when I was like twenty, and she it was on the street in Montreal. She was like, "You want to come in and get a blowjob?" And I was like, "Drunk," and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> most I did. Uh, most of the girls. I've been staring at strippers for like twelve hours. <laughs> most of the working girls I had met were older. Like, yeah, I was in my twenties at that point, and they were in their. 30s or 40s maybe 50s i had a couple of those but that was just because i i had a thing for more older girls i knew they knew what they wanted there was less bullshit they yeah were, they were always independent and you and were like the young thing too that no feels well, you good. know what happened dude is every they like they would meet me and they go oh 
you're not a piece of shit. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, you should see the guys we meet. And then I started talking to other guys who've met hookers, and I was like, oh, no, no wonder. every. And, like, that was why I never felt any remorse, because I never treated anyone like that. That is a... Uh, I always knew this This is a, a thing, and you're trying to do your thing, and I was... and they always, I blew on my hands because my hands were cold, and the woman looked at me like... You are a very nice man <laughs> compared to most people who frequent hookers. Oh, dude, it was so. <laughs> but I mean, it was. You just uh, have to be. It's like being an actor or a performer. If you're just basically nice, people are like, "What a kind." Individual. I had so many of these kinks and fetishes. I needed to get out, and I was always trying to do the next what kind crazy of stuff. I I got really into BDSM wow. and all types. Oh yeah, of stuff. yeah, yeah. And Dom, I was I always wanted to. I was really big into being a dom and having someone submit to me. Dominating somebody. They, uh, but they had to want it. They yeah. have to tell me, tell me to do this horrible fucking thing to you or to degrade you or whatever. So didn't like, you have like a me. relationship like that for I a I did. While? I had like a D, like dominant, I lived with a guy, by the way, who, submissive. Actually, who it, had we, this. And he, he used, one of his subs used to come over and clean our apartment. We had gone to like master <laughs> and slave and it didn't work What's out. What's that mean? It's just a more intense version of dominant uh, <laughs> and submissive. I thought it was like a class you guys went to together. Yeah. <laughs> we took a gear of master and slave. And uh, and it just it didn't work. So what is that? What's the difference between dom, sub, and master and slave? I don't know, man. I didn't care about categories, but she really did. And yeah. so she was... I was just like, I know that I, my kink fits into this thing, yeah. but I don't want to be a part of your stupid group. I've always been <laughs> a contrarian. I don't fit political parties. I, that was my thing when I joined comedy. Yeah. I joined comedy when I started. It was everyone was in a group or a clique. And I'm like, I just want to yeah. fucking be me, dude, and tell jokes. Yeah. And Which is a way you can do it, by the way, if someone's listening. It, it can be done. Not to say that I don't want to hang out and make friends doing stand-up, yeah. but I don't. But it feels sometimes like there's a pressure in stand-up to like do what everyone else is doing fight that urge I yeah that do, it, do what you, you want to do well. i don't at least i don't think but yeah. but it was um i wanted i mean i guess i wanted that to just but the, that that didn't work out because we started developing feelings and if you how i mean i don't know how that how works do you when dominate you really, someone if you love that you can still do that as long as you respect one another because that's the yeah. biggest thing because because everyone guys always talk about i remember talking to this dude and he's like i don't care if i use a condom during sex because i hated condoms i only used them with prostitutes yeah and he goes i don't know because half of it's about bragging rights and i'm like dude you're such a douche <laughs> i don't i never wanted to brag my yeah. stuff was just for me i never told my yeah, friends you weren't, about it you weren't bragging because I, right? I would try and talk about sex on stage early as a comic and i'd go to fucking a mic and some they'd give me this oh who's this dude is bragging that he gets laid or they treat yeah. me like some douchebag and i'm like I'm just, people have sex. Yeah. And you don't have to be attractive to do it. (laughs) I'm not saying that I was banging supermodels. It was was me and some other average people, but we were having kinky fun. And so I wasn't even about numbers. I was just about meeting someone who fit me, what I was into. And the more you you trust someone that you can be kinky with them the more you can do so what kind what's kind of crazy shit did you guys do you and this chick like as far as um i don't know like Like torture scenes and stuff like that and tying up did you tell me you like would take her out in public i told i did take take someone for a walk on a leash through (laughs) through south station (laughs) and on a train and some girl across from us just goes is that girl on a leash (laughs) (laughs) this was late at night all right i had to ask you some questions about that like First off, I would be convinced that I would see someone that I know. Well, I didn't care, dude. You didn't give a fuck? Dude, no. What if you saw your fucking Why? I like baseball what I coach? Like. I like what I like. I don't... <laughs> that's I, never, I never That's what I like about you, set. man. You don't give a fuck about that sort of thing. Like, I, 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 would, I would... I think now, today... I'm in a good enough place that if I want to do something like that, I would. But it didn't... It wasn't always that easy. I mean, it took me a while. And then to admit that I was... Uh, like more open sexually. Yeah. That I banged uh, trans women and men and uh, femboys and stuff like that. You did that all, me. all that stuff. That, that, that trying to keep that in because I was yeah. like I had anxiety about that. What kind? Just like, am I gay? Is that, yeah, is that... that's just like, where do I fit? Because I know I'm not. Because everyone, you, you're told you need a label. Yeah. I'm like I don't fucking. And I, I've written jokes about this. I just you you haven't seen any of them, and I really like these bits, and they do well in certain rooms. Yeah. But they're. They're hard to do. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna go to Sons of Italy Club and yeah. talk about banging banging trannies. <laughs> yeah, that's not something I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, like Norton has kind of Jim Norton has kind of gotten, but he's worked himself his way up to that. Yeah, and it's taken a long time, and he and he like I, I don't know, I don't know how he even talks about it, but in a way that people love it. But he does, 
and I, you know, I got I got no judgments about anything like that at all. Like I think I think everyone should do whatever well, the fuck I, they want. Dude, but like really... I would probably struggle with that too. Like because I, there was a time where like because when I got head from that hooker, I was so fucked up yeah. that I was like I don't even know. Like the next day, I was like that could have been a dude for all. Oh, I, I wouldn't even care. And I was like that could have been a dude for all I know. But then I was like, even if it was, who fucking cares? Like yeah. I got a blowjob. Like and, and I just kind of got over it. Like like you not know you know that's so weird because, um. But I, uh, if so, you see two girls make out, God, no one ever screamed, Dyke! Yeah. The fucking Dyke, man! Yeah, tell your parents! If, but, but, and then, uh, at the same time, it's also, if you, uh, if, if some gay dude banged a girl once, people wouldn't stop calling him a faggot. Yeah. People wouldn't just be like, oh, he's yeah. straight now, but yeah, as soon yeah. as you fucking do anything outside the realms of anything... Yeah, it's still you, kind of an old-fashioned uh, you idea. You nail yourself. And that's, but that's like growing up in Boston, and even if, like, you had a great time, there there's gonna be, like... A day or two, where you're like, "What did I do? What's what am I?" Especially me, I grew up Catholic, so I like. I see. My dad was an atheist, and my mom was relaxed Catholic. So I never yeah. had my father refused to send me to parochial school. One because we didn't have the money. Yeah. And two because he didn't want me getting brainwashed by the church, as he put it. Are the when you when you meet a transsexual like from from the internet compared to like an older woman from the internet, like. Is there a difference in personality? Like, are the trannies like more like dudes? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, as far as like, all right, we fucked, get out of here. Uh, or are they like kind of like? Necessi- I've, dude, I remember I met this girl who was really into rape fantasy, and she would have me dress up like I was gonna mug her, and I'd come in, and she was just. <laughs> would you dress up like the guy from like the eighties? I would put on a, <laughs> exactly. I put on a hoodie and I put a bandana across my face. Right, I would take. I take this is before Ubers. I take a cab over to the back bay, the rich part of Boston. She was a rich South American girl, and I would go in there. And she would want it, she wanted like hardcore. And it was more than I was ready for. Like every now and then I'd meet girls that were more in, intense than I was. So they're bringing you up a level. They would bring me up a level. Most of the time that's how it worked. Even with that master slave thing, she was more into the scene than I was when it started. Wow. So she was filling me in on what, sometimes she'd be like, you know, as a master, you should do this. And that was, <laughs> that was, um, just, that, just saying, master, the, uh, the old, you're the boss, the but old, just maybe. Uh, I think they call it doming from the bottom. Uh, <laughs> now we hear. That's and, a uh, great name for a CD, doming from the doming bottom. Doming from the bottom. But, uh, and then, but and I remember... <laughs> Feeling a little weird, weird about that at first, but at the same time, it's like this is what she likes. I don't, I don't judge her, and I did it, and I was always like, but it wasn't. Is it whenever I'm role playing, I'm always the fucking rapist. I'm what? never, the, I'm never the the movies. <laughs> I'm never that dude that the girls want. I'm that dirt ball that they just comes in and forces it. You're like Every an, time act, you're like an actor. You're like I have range, you know. Yeah, I could be, I, I could be a cast. hero. I could be every, the fireman who comes in and saves you. Every role play I've ever done, I'm typecast into forced sex, or I'm a <laughs> douchebag who gets tricked by the girl. You know, it was, you know, when you said we had a rape fantasy, I was like, you could play a rapist on Law and Order. That was Thank like the you. first I, thought I had, you know. But you could also play a cop on Law and Order. You have like that, you know, same. But there's, uh, but you know, some say there's they're the same thing. But you know, <laughs> she was really into it, and like I would come in, and I remember sometimes I remember t- stopping her one time, and I'm like, this is too much. Like, I can't keep an erection when you're physically fighting me and punching me in the side of the head. <laughs> That's not fun for me. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But when oh, we so would she finish, would, like, fully, like... When she, yeah, it was it was too much. It was like, this is, like, it was, it's, it's you're like making you're this too realistic. But she's, and, uh, she's making it a real fight. She would get, she would, as soon as we would finish, she was like, get the fuck out. I would sit there and try, and I used to do this to hookers, too. I would talk to them, try and get to know them, and uh, yeah. even before and after, because... I, I do that with strippers. I would get off more the more I knew about a girl. Same. And I I know this sounds weird, like, and everyone would, calls me bullshit, but I could never, when a girl's vapid, I it just did nothing for me. And the more intelligent, the more I learned about her, and also, yeah. the, like, I, her backstory, I'd be like, oh, where are you from? Oh, Honduras? <laughs> I've never banged Honduran. That, that's something yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I would always... Men are stupid like that. We, we, always, we like, like, little lists and collections. Yeah. And, like, uh, checking off things on, but, our, on the list no what i found with trans girls is they were they had a more realistic approach to sex with, with with a lot of girls you meet now i plenty of girls i met genetic girls you know born fully woman <laughs> off funny. off of um, cis women yeah i guess it used to be genetic now cis is i the like genetic PC. that sounds more like sci-fi like gen women it sounds yeah it does i <laughs> like that but the, I prefer um, that don't worry cis is going to be offensive in five years and that'll fade out anyway yeah it sounds like sister <laughs> but they would um, they just be more straight into it because you know society's always given. 
society, some parts of society already hate that you exist. Yeah. So having to deal with your sexuality and what you like is is an afterthought. Incest porn is like the most popular type of porn in the country is right it really? now. Really? That's wild. All over. Never por- got into incest. The top ten th- videos on Pornhub are always incest, mm. and that's what all the biggest stars do now. Is but incest it's porn. You know what it so is. So I feel like the world's getting kinkier with it's, you. Sometimes you you would like when I would meet girls offline who knew what they wanted it was fine we could that was my thing i was like i don't want to pick a girl up from a bar and then have to exp- get through through that process of delving i probably don't even like you the sex isn't going to be good because we're not comfortable with one another all yeah. right i'm bringing you into my house anything could happen whereas i talk and I'd be like what are your kinks and what are your limits and let's set up a safe word yeah and she'd be like i like this i'd be like i like this let's see where they meet up and we'll feel it out and if we go with each other we'll keep meeting up and if we don't we'll screw and uh but was there was, was there times where it didn't work out like where yeah you'd meet i've had someone? a couple of times where i thought i had something good and i messaged someone and then they they weren't like i'd, I'd meet someone who was like oh i want to be dominated and then i'd meet them and i was like i i would t- i don't i don't want some fucking newbie uh because <laughs> i don't want to get too rough with you and have you not be prepared for that that's not comfortable for me that's wow. not comfortable for you yeah i'm not an asshole i don't ever enjoy doing stuff to people did that you learn like that by love. Did you learn that by like trial and error? Like where there's a couple. What times, were some bad? What were some like uncomfortable situations you were in? Like doing this sort of stuff. I uh, just a time when someone said they wanted it really rough, and I I bit them in the neck, and they weren't into it. Ooh. And but I was like, we've been gearing up for this, and all this talk you've been putting up led me to believe that that was an. Actual so does that just like halt it too? Like, are you? Like, no, no. You guys kept, having a good time? And they're like, hey, hey. No, we just kind of <laughs> kept going, but then I couldn't I, handle I tried all that pressure after. All I that. just. It should just be confident, man, and just if 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 they say no, it, then then no, it's not yeah. the end of the world. You you stepped a little too far, um, you rein it in. They're not comfortable with that. Sometimes I've had people do shit to me I wasn't cool with. Like what? I I remember someone slapped me across the face, and I grabbed their hand, and I was like, <laughs> "Don't ever fucking do that to me ever." And it was um, <laughs> it was this tr- oh it was this God. trans dude who was in college. I I think I met him. As him is the right pronoun. Uh, had a pussy. Still very much looked like a lesbian girl. So it was a, a woman to transitioning turn into, into a, a guy. Man. And and so I had met them before and hooked up. After like a studio show, I had met them and then banged in their dorm all night. And then I, I met <laughs> them. They booty called me again. And... This he had had I guess more testosterone. I was like, you're too masculine for me because I'm not into anyone. Like I'm only into femininity. Yeah, I'm not yeah. into masculinity uh, at all. Uh, and so you've been bet, but like he walked up and hit me, and I, I was like, don't ever fucking do that. You can have a problem with me. And I <laughs> was like, don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking dude, you want to take this outside? <laughs> you know what? You keep taking these hormones. Next week I'm gonna kick your fucking. You getting ass. that fucking testosterone rage, buddy? <laughs> I'm going bald. I got more than you. That's fucked, man. But but and then he got weird, and I was like, "You shouldn't have got weird." Like, yeah, we, you know. Uh, I was I was fucking this like a girl I was seeing this like, and she just one time we had, had sex like three or four times, and she's on top and she's looking down at me. Yeah. I, she did get this weird look in her eye for a second. And she just straight up punched me in the face, dude. <laughs> I had that happen with this whore I met from Singapore. It's hard. Like I've never been punched by a girl like that. It, clean it hurts. across the face. I, I got tear, tearied up because yeah. like, I was so <laughs> yeah. I was in this brothel in Germany, and they're kind of like the red light district of Amsterdam, except in Frankfurt, Germany. You walk. This chick was German through the building. Interesting. I met a, this girl was from Singapore. First time I ever bottomed out in a girl. I felt like Vlad the Impaler. It was amazing. Thought I was Lexington Steel. What's bottomed out mean? Uh where my dick didn't go all the way in her. Oh my god! Yeah, I, th- I felt like a superhero. <laughs> but anyway, at some point like, she got on top that's, of me. That could happen. I know, as an Irish dude from, <laughs> uh, I felt I felt amazing, and she she just dope slapped me across the face, and we had been doing coke, and I it was it was like my I just turned I don't remember what age I was turning maybe twenty four, and she goes oh we party Michael happy birthday party and we're doing blow and she just fucking slaps me, I'm like don't do that she slapped me again and I grabbed it and I was like don't do that. Like that's not. What's um, that about? I wonder. I don't know. And she was paid. She was. You were yeah, paying her. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not paying you to hit me. So yeah, don't do. If yeah. I pay you, we're gonna do what I want to do. Like that's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I. <laughs> I wonder what her da- I her this girl, side like, of that Cambridge story is. Brazilian like Brazilian girl, and uh. I bet it was the coke. She was just like. Might have been this girl. Getting those coke impulses, like hit him, hit him. She was you know riding I mean? me backwards, and the TV happened to be on. It was on a cash cab, and it got to a moment. <laughs> Shout out Ben Bailey. Yeah, Ben Bailey. <laughs> ben Bailey was doing his thing, and he was doing the red light challenge. It was like. Uh, 
what is it, American League baseball teams, East Division. And so I'm like, all right, Orioles? And I'm, <laughs> and then she goes, oh, you're not even trying to fuck me. I, that was a horrible accent. But but I was like, yeah, but I paid yeah, you yeah. for this. You're, you're going to ride me, and I'm going to yell out fucking baseball teams, all right? That's the best. And uh, Sports and sex. <laughs> I love getting... uh, game shows. I, was, I don't care about sports. I'm just into the game show aspect. Oh, wow. I love trivia. But... I, uh... I like a good. I like to watch sports and get blown at the but same you, time. You asked me er- me earlier like about good. like if it's easier with. Uh, I guess oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, now I've tried saying this with people, and I've had girls be like, "No, no, it's not true." Testosterone, I think, naturally makes you hornier. I think it absolutely does because uh, guys, trans dudes who've taken testosterone, and trans women who still have some testosterone in their body, even though yeah. they've taken estrogen have a much more pragmatic sense of sexual intercourse yeah. than women do. Uh, you know, I guess genetic women will say. So, Fuck. Orgasm. Yeah. Leave. Well, it's just like, let's be practical. We're just two people who want to bang and leave. Some girls have that, but the overwhelming majority don't. And that would drive me nuts. Yeah. Because I'm like, we're just adults. We're adults who want to fuck and have fun with each other and share a good time. Maybe we're going to get high and do it, take some molly or yeah. smoke weed. And But we're just going to... You know, we can be adults about this. Let's leave our shame and all that societal bullshit at the home or wherever and just, you know, be people. Yeah. And be confident in what we want. That's fucking And beautiful. that was always easy with, there was a pragmatic sense about, oh, I'm into this and I want to have sex. And that fear of being a whore wasn't there. Whereas, like, a lot of girls I'd met or I'd pick up at bars would have that last minute resistance, for lack of a better term, which yeah. is, like, I remember I met this girl and I... I texted her because I knew she got around and I, I had broken up with someone and I wanted to get laid. And so we went back to my place <laughs> and she's like, oh, I don't know. And she, like I had already gotten her down to her underwear. Yeah. And she's like, oh, am I going to take that off? And, and oh, make sure the lights are off. And I'm, I want to be like, you, you're going to have sex with me. That's why you came over here tonight. I, this whole thing, this whole five hour thing was an illusion yeah. to get to the point where we could be like, let's have sex. Just... I don't. I don't care. I'm not gonna go tell all my friends. Guess what whore I bet. I'm not yeah. that type of dude. No one's gonna find out about this. It's well. I guess now we're talking about yeah. it. But at the time, Let's I was like, "This is out. for me. This isn't for me to tell people, so yeah, I can yeah. feel like more of a man." But I already feel like a fucking man. I don't that, need other people to validate that. That's that like sense. you were, but at this point, you're like you had been. You have like two sex lives, kind of like you have like this sex for fun and then sex for love, right? And she didn't know which one it really was. No, this this girl was a one night stand. Oh, so okay. it was, and I knew that she was a girl who was uh, open sexually. She had already banged a couple of my friends. And so I was like, just, I want to be like, it could, cause when that happens, you feel like they're doing it for two reasons. They're doing it one, um, to prove to you that they're not a whore. Uh, so you don't judge them. And I'm like, I don't fucking judge you. I'm a whore. I'm a slut. Yeah. I'm just whatever. It's fine. If it's yeah. what you want to do, then live your life. Life's too short to worry about what people are thinking. And also, it's also society has really pushed down on girls that you're a fucking skank. Yeah. And it's really rubbed into them. And so you're dealing with however old she is, that many years of societal, you're yeah. a slut, don't be okay with this, and getting them to be okay with that. Yeah, that, it, that they can just say, "Hey, I want to have sex." Because actually, I remember when I had banged that trans dude for the first time, uh, and when we were all said and done, and um, I, I, I don't want to be doing a bit on here because I wrote this as a bit, and I don't really get to do it. But uh, just what a um, what he, a was like, just he was I'm like, he was like, he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, uh, I don't normally do this, and I was like, he's like, I don't. I don't normally do this, you know, and uh, with the sort of thing that only uh, like a born a woman, genetic woman would say to me. Yeah. And I was because no trans girl would ever apologize for that. Yeah. Um, no guy would ever apologize for that. And I was like this. The, the, even after transitioning or going, he was just in the early stages of it. That impression of you're a skank was still there because yeah. I would never receive that. If this person had been brought up a woman. Yeah. So he still had that. And I was like, I was like, dude, you're a guy now. You don't apologize for being a fucking slut. <laughs> you brag about <laughs> it. That's not what you. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. You don't have to feel that way. And I was taken aback by that. It was so. It's true. I mean, honestly, that's how I feel mentally. But I have I have the same sort of thoughts myself, even as a dude. Sometimes, like if being I'm, worried about that. Yeah, I st- I've all I've had that too. My yeah. anxiety got really bad about sex later on about certain things coming out and then I was like if I'm going to be a comic I have to embrace it yeah because yeah, the me. best thing to do is just be okay with your faults it, the more it's like when your friends shit on you right like yeah. 
Like they make fun of your clothing or some aspect about you physically. Like my friends will make fun of a way I say a certain word. Yeah. And it, like they do it, my brothers and my group of friends and my brother gets so peeved about little shit. And so they rail into him. And yeah. I'm like, Joe, I should have said my brother's name. Uh, you can't, <laughs> you can't get mad about that because then they're going to use it. Yeah. When you don't give a fuck, they got nothing to use on you. It's true. You know, why? Why? You, it's true. I mean, that's how. That's how. Well, it's one of the things I try to do with this podcast, I'm pretty open. I talk about everything, so it's like no one can come out later and say like that I kept anything a secret and like try and use it against me because it's just like I got nothing to hide. Hey, you cover your bases. Like, yeah. like you, you were talking about Jim Norton. How's anyone gonna make like, oh, dude, you fuck trannies? Yeah. 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 I just he, he. I talked about it in my last special. Love to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really love to. It's a, it's, a, it's like a problem money wise. That's the only thing he ever talks about. Is how I'm, much money. You but the only you know what what f- fucked me up in that respect was that I wasn't sure where my sexuality began and where my sex addiction ended. Yeah, like and th- what was just a step to do something new and crazy because it's just like heroin as it, it stops working. Yeah. Like I would find a, a porn type or a sexual thing and then you do it and it's like like you said. Like, it's not, you do it in real life, and it's never as crisp or as clean as it was made to the fantasy yeah. appear. Yeah, exactly. And, then you, and then you need something up. new, eventually. Stand-up lives up to it. It's one of those things you're like, oh, what's it going to be like? And then it lives up to it. But It I, does, man. But I, I feel that way about some of So what, that's, like, when did you think, like, when did you start thinking it went from, like, a hobby to, like, an addiction? Like, what, what? things about it don't you like Like because sometimes i did things with people that i afterwards i was like oh that person was gross i wish i didn't do that yeah like i i wish i didn't do that i wish i didn't have that fucking experience like i met i went this couple and it was like a cuckold thing i was gonna bang the the wife in front of the (laughs) husband and then they were like oh we could be quiet the kids are another word that's very popular in america yeah and i was like dude your kids are in the house I did it anyway. The kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, that was so, people were just weird. You know, at a certain, for a long time, I just punished myself because I, I, I had been put down a lot in my life. And some, even as much as I fought that, some of those things get in your head. And I yeah, hated myself. Of course. I drank because I hated me. I hated other people because my anger was centered towards me. Yeah. I, I can't make it in life. Well, maybe it's because of this. It's because of where I come from, or my race, or my economic background. Yeah. Which, of course, economics matter. But you know, you if you if you have that defeatist mentality all the time, it will affect you. And so, you, one of those things with so many angry people is they project anger onto other people. And yeah. I always I always had another group or another person to project anger on when I should have. And a lot of times it was coming from within me. I drank because I hated myself. If I hated myself and I was ashamed, I would go out and do something crazy sexually and then feel ashamed and then have to fucking make up for it with more drinking and more yeah, sex. Yeah, it's a cycle. Well, like I, um, like I remember I went to this other cuckold thing. I cuckled at a black dude once. I know, right? Wow. Score one for the good guys. I, just, I just kidding, guys. Oh, an Irish, <laughs> or Irish redhead cuck holding a black man. And, uh, and he was That only Haitian. happens in jail occasionally. He, <laughs> at one point, like, he, he tried to tickle my foot, and I was like, dude, I'm all set. Like, I, 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 the agreement was you is wouldn't that a, fucking. Um, is that like, do you think, testing the The agreement the was you, you wouldn't touch me. I'm, I'm out. I saw your black Haitian stink finger come out of the darkness and touch my toe, and I'm I'm not cool. While and you I was think that's gotta wife. be like a hey hey? Like a, I didn't know what it was. It's I got to be. Uh, hey, I think uh, I think it was, and I was just like, ah, yeah, maybe I'm your penis. I'm grab my stuff and uh, take off, buddy. Thank you. Or it was, you know, just stuff like that. I once sold so my, dude, so someone dude. sold my socks to this dude for like seventy five bucks because he wanted to smell them, and I was like, why did I do that? Like, I know I'm a poor, destitute kid who who's trying to get by, and you know, I, a lot of times I've I stolen shit i've done i've committed fraud i've found ways to make money and i don't have a record because stupid people generally get caught yeah Uh, and i've always been very particular with the way i do things and not mention them but i was like ah dude i remember i I, you you sold your socks for 75 dollars yeah i sold my socks guy found like i had a thing on a uh, like a fetish site, and he messaged me. And so I was it's like, been great for you, by the way, to go from back page, fucking Phoenix, like reading the paper, to the birth of the internet and all that. these websites. Dude, like, I, I I missed out on Tinder and Bumble. I, I'm so mad I missed out on Tinder. Um, yeah, so bad. And when it really right. got good, but then before <laughs> any of those apps, and I remember, um, so he just wanted. It was so weird. Like he he's he's just like, oh, I want socks. You don't got to come on them or put blood on them. But he gave me this. 
huge. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not, I'm not some weirdo. Dude, that's what okay. he kept doing. He kept <laughs> trying to pretend like he was some normal dude. And he was like, I, I met him outside South I just Station. want your smelly socks. No blood. It was raining out. It was a Sunday. <laughs> I was on my way to the vault or the comedy den to do a mic at that point, whichever Holy club it was. Shit. And so I stopped by. And so it was like, he had messaged me and he's like, dude, I... <laughs> I just I like to sniff dude socks. I'm just a regular dude, and that's something that I do. It's you Bill know? Burr. I'm just, just a I just like to sniff socks. Yeah. But, uh, no big uh, deal. You no know, big, it's normal. Just, <laughs> just sniffing <laughs> socks, dude. You know, guys. Let me smell you your socks, socks, kid. Oh uh, yeah. And then, uh, but he gave me such details as to what to do, and so I just wore the same socks all week, warm to work, and I bring him a pair. They had to be in like a special bag, and I remember thinking, dude, I hope. We don't get busted because if if we cops come, this looks like a drug deal, and they yeah. just find me with a bag of socks. <laughs> And so, and you got off on this in zero way. You just no, to this sell was just purely socks. a money thing. Yeah. This did nothing for me whatsoever. This in but for him. No, th- this was this that that see that's why I was like weird about this because it, it did nothing. It for was me. like the gayest thing you'd ever done, but it was nothing. But yeah, it was like up until and I was like, um, and then he meets me. He's just older guy. He feels like some suburban father with like he looks like a a Santa Claus from like a shitty mall. Oh. And I was like, oh, dude, this is weird. And then he's like, hey, you know, it's nice to meet another normal guy off the internet. And I'm like, dude, there's nothing normal about me or you or what's going on. We're outside a train station. It's a rainy Sunday night. I get a bag of socks. You get $75. And and he, this is how you know this took place in Boston because there was a pay, <laughs> paper clip of $75 and a $2 scratch ticket and a $5. He's like, I hope you win. Gave me fucking oh, scratch tickets. Oh, God, and then, dude. And then he, he fist bumps me and goes, Go Patriots. And I was like, dude, don't, uh, don't you dare. Uh, no, we're not buddies. Oh, my God. Bur- by the way, how would bother me more than anything you've said this whole time to be like, doing something kind of kinky and have someone go like, hey, go Patriots. I'm like, don't you fucking dare. Don't you ruin bring, this. Bring that <laughs> part of my life into <laughs> this part of my don't life. Don't you bring Tommy Boy into this. He is, <laughs> he is an innocent sacred. good boy. He has done nothing <laughs> or depraved to earn to get soiled in this debauchery. Do not. You know, I, I I partake in the grotesqueries. Tom Brady does not. And that is and so anyway, funny. we uh, so and then I'm like, oh, and I left. And um when I got to the comedy down in the vault or whatever, he had written me an email, five paragraph essay about how these were the worst socks he ever bought. He wrote me a Yelp review. Like, you know those angry oh, Yelp reviews? What a fucking I will never do business sucker. with you again. These are the worst socks I've ever paid for in my life. And I'm like, dude, I wore them for a week. I don't know what to do. Seriously? That's yeah, what he... wrote me. I wish I saved it, but I deleted it out you of You wore shape. the socks for a week without washing He's them. like, he, first sentence, I don't know what you did with these socks, but they are not what I paid for and asked for. Uh, <laughs> dude, I wish I had a camera on that guy as he like went to his car. You know what hap- <sighs> happened is I got uh, out of the These car, aren't the socks I like. He whipped him out of the bag and was just like, it goes, ah! I just had a fit like, yeah. like when you pay for Coke and you realize it's not Coke, yeah. it's baby aspirin or some shit. He's uh, like, I, I miss my son's soccer practice for this. Damn, dude, that's, that's, that's fucking... That, so what else did he say? Just, just he's in. Like it ended at that. I, I, because I was just, I was so. That's so funny, man. Bewildered that I got this insulting. Yeah. Uh, my feet don't stank enough. Well, that kind, of, that would make me feel better if you were already feeling like kind of weird about it. Yeah, yeah it did. I, it I did. got his, I got his money and fuck him. Um. I never felt gross about anything that I wanted to do and was comfortable. Let me doing. pause this for a second because I want to ask you if I can ask you a question before yeah. and not have it on here. <laughs> I was just, I asked him, Mike goes, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Mike goes, it's just like if you were choking me. <laughs> I told Will that it's just just like if you grab my neck, buddy. I'd let you know if it wasn't right the right time. <laughs> my bed's right there, too. It, uh, it really is. And, right. and you've got the Spider-Man blankets and pillows. <laughs> this is... Oh, I don't really. We, we, we got the same soup, favorite superhero. This, we're halfway this, there. That's a lamp, by the way. Yeah, you can wear that mask. Turn it on. It's getting dark. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you because you told me this story that I thought was so funny. Because I like anything that brings in kind of like the mundane to this sort of stuff. And like, so you were telling me about like the girl you're dating and like she had a broken foot. Oh, <laughs> I like that you leave it at that. So uh, we have. Well, I'll let you tell your own we don't story. We really do it much anymore. But, you know, we, 
we're kinky together. Like I was just yeah. telling you, if I'm going to be with someone, I tell them my history. I'm not, I, I'm not going to have, if you, if that's not cool with you, then fine. I don't well, I was to, surprised I don't not to interrupt you, you, but when we were talking outside of Nick's, I was like, would you want to talk about this stuff on a podcast? I'm like, without hesitation, you're like, oh yeah, let's do well, it. Well, the more I'm open about it, the less fucking anxiety and bullshit I feel. Like, yeah. My best thing to do is just own it. Yeah. And because so much anxiety is like, oh, when does this come out? And it's. Uh, well, I mean, anything, anything to get me publicity, Will. So yeah. I want to talk about <laughs> what are you working on, Mike? I don't want to, Mike. I don't want to hear your Season. fucking jokes. I don't want to know what clubs you're doing. Just tell me about the pussy and the trannies, okay? That's where ratings, the, ratings. That's where the fucking meat is, man. Yeah, man. This is good stuff, though, because I, I feel like we, I've never had anyone on who talked about. That. I've, I've had guys who. I have friends who have what they consider sex addiction, but they don't want to talk about it on a podcast. And I was like. That 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 makes uh, it so much worse. It's, yeah, it's like, it's, you, it's like trying to tackle uh, trying to tackle any addiction where you're still ashamed of it and you put it in the closet. It's you, true. It's how how do you get sober when you can't let anyone know that you're trying to get sober and you go to a party and people are continually trying to get you to drink. Yeah, and you haven't explained to them I can't do this. Yeah. I don't want to do this. Uh, or you if you're in a relationship, um, or like uh, I mean I I just had you know a lot of unhealthy sex. I'm just an addict. Yeah. And when you're an addict, you find certain avenues to work that addiction. Some people use opioids, some people use alcohol, some people use food or sex or anything. Yeah. I happen to use sex and alcohol. And sex was a little more difficult because I can I can take all the beer out of my house. My prick never leaves my body. Yeah. It's always you got to have sex. And um to be a happy Or it just it diverts into like porn, but I found, you know, ways to deal with that where I'm like I don't want to I don't want to watch that much porn. I want to be How much healthy. porn is like too much? Um, like what, what, what are you, I'd have points where I was just like, watch it for like three hours Wow. and I was just edge myself and, and I would be releasing dopamine or serotonin in my edging brain. is when you just go right into the, right and, into and, the and it's and it fucking, and a lot of people do it. And uh, that's one of the things I've, I've realized is, is that that's the a more, big thing. Uh, more, more you talk about problems you have, the more yeah. you realize everyone else has them yeah. and they're just afraid to admit it. And then when you say it, like I met this comic in New York and he was having a hard time, and I told him, I was talking about being a booze bag, and he's like, yeah, I get sex. And I was like, dude, me too. Yeah, and we yeah. just traded stories and about how sex and porn and who had had in the past trying to use the internet to hook up with people. Yeah. Um, the porn thing is a real issue like for a lot of guys. For society. Yeah. It, and it, I, I talked with, I read a study that it, it kind of messes up your brain in the way you... Oh, it, definitely. It, in the way you approach sex. I, I was talking to a certain comic who's like, oh, I haven't watched porn in five years. And I'm like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, dude, I fucking hate you. Because um, I, um, I want to know who that is after. I'll tell you who it is. Um, so, so what was the story with the broken phone? Oh, well, I know the story, but it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> threesomes and stuff. Because this reminds me of me, this story. She had uh, always, um, we had been kinky. Because, I mean, she was with me. Um, and in order to be with me, I, I'm going to be honest about who I am and the stuff I've done. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm... I, because I would I meet all these fucking you know people I grew up with Boston dudes, uh, especially people and I say Boston I mean actual people from the city because everyone says they're from Boston yeah. they're all from some butt fuck place somewhere else, <laughs> um, who looking at you Worcester yeah I'm I mean just even the suburbs and yeah, vicinity yeah, but the, the um they always begin with an M. It's yeah. always a Milton, Medford, <laughs> Malden, Methuen, Manchester, Manchester yeah. by the sea, Melrose. It always, it's always an M town. Yeah. As though you're doing some shitty show where you want to kill yourself. <laughs> and um, the uh, we uh, I, I guess I talk to my friends and they're always like, they 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 want wild stuff too, well, not as wild yeah. as me, but they want wi- wild stuff and they're like. Oh, dude, I, I, isn't it great when a girl fucking licks your ass? And I'm like, yeah, I actually enjoy that. I remember I had a girl do it one time, and my brother had brought home this girl, and he was in the next room, and she heard me telling this girl to lick my ass, and she, then she went and told all the other people that she knows, which are my fucking friends. Yeah. So I found out that way, uh, which everything comes out at some point, but he goes, yeah, you can never... One guy told me you should marry that girl. And I was like, no, I would never do that. Girl who has to marry me has to be this paragon of morality, and she could never... Like, all these guys expect a girl who's never fucked anyone who yeah. will want to have sex with them when they want it, but then they... I'm like, you still want that kinky stuff, and that's okay. Yeah. It's okay to be want cr- kinky stuff as long as it doesn't Absolutely. harm you, right? Yeah. That, there's nothing wrong with having an avid sex life, but they... They push, the, they're like, oh, well, I can't do that with my wife and whatnot. So then, but then they all just cheat on their fucking girlfriends. I don't want to be a dude who's out cheating. Yeah. That, not at all. 
Like I would never feel good about that, huh? And someone who cares about me. And that was a, that's why I was like, I have to be with someone who knows what I'm into to, can be open to certain things. Yeah. Like you, you know, obviously I've, I got so much of that out of my system, which yeah. is one of the good things of having a lot of sex when you're young. Yeah. You don't, you don't always feel that. Yeah. Oh, I've never been pissed on by a girl in a bathtub at a motel six. Yeah. You know, and then and you're like, oh, but I did. And I realized, guess what I realized? Like everyone thinks in their 40s. Guess what I realized? I didn't like it. Yeah. You know, because I would talk to a lot of girls who are always like. It's true though. Oh, a lot, we're in girls who are like, I meet guys who are in their fucking 40s, middle-aged men. Yeah. Who are now questioning their sexuality. I would always ask girls about the guys, other guys. So I would see, well, for one, I'd ask to see where my penis stacked up. Just because I was convinced. Gotta know. Would, but also I wanted to. Sex which law. Found out I'm doing pretty well. Not not that bad, and also I would uh, I would ask so what because they would complain to me about uh, and all these other people who just didn't know what was going on. Yeah. It was so weird to for them to find a young good dude who knew what he wanted. Yeah. At that point, but so I needed to be with someone who I could. This is my past. You know, you got to be okay with it, and don't fucking hold it over me because yeah. I'm not being in a relationship with someone who thinks that uh, if because I was into something, I'm gonna be go. Being kinky does not mean being a slut. They're not synonymous. Um, no way. And no way, man. So we, we had had threesomes in the past, and we had an avid sex life. And I remember one time we met this girl, and she had messaged us. She was Puerto Rican. And um, my girlfriend is um, from the Middle East, so it was like my interracial fantasy. And <laughs> um, I remember we met. She, was, she messaged me. She was like, oh, do you want to have a foursome? And I was like... Uh, I'm not into that situation group thing with my girlfriend, another dude. Uh, that's not for me. And she's like, no, it's another girl. And I was like, well, <laughs> that sounds about right up my alley. <laughs> and um, uh, because uh, I'm coming over. And you know what? It, it, two years ago, there was this giant blizzard in Boston, oh, and my girlfriend hugest. had broken her f- ankle, or she broken her foot because um, she, you know, during the winter time, dark people don't get vitamin D from the sun. The Bones got brittle, foot broke, <laughs> and I remember. Dude, it was, wasn't a Trump supporter it stomping was, on yeah, it because no. she was Middle we, we Eastern. We were drying out weed, and she stood up when her foot was asleep and broke it. And uh, so she. Um, uh, that's an easy break. She. I remember. Um, she. So this girl was messaging me. She's like, "Oh, I can't come over during the storm because there's other girls from Peru, and she's afraid to drive in the snow, and she's scared of this kind of weather." And so we kept waiting, and then um. <laughs> I was really pushing it, which is what you don't do when you have groups things with your girlfriend. You let her make the decisions. That's good advice. Don't Dante Nero helped see helped me when I told him about this situation. I'll no. plan out exactly what I did wrong, and because it's not you, you know, if you're giving her the option to remain safe and in control of the situation, and when you yeah. take that away from her, you're making this not a safe thing. And so you kind of t- as a guy, you, as the guy, you kind of got to take a step back a little it, bit. T- t- maybe like I would always take charge once people got there, because I've talked to one dude who's like, "Oh, you got to sit back when the girls go at it," and I was like, "I never did. I was the one who got us into the room and always broke the ice and always started giving out orders and telling how things were gonna go." Nice. I was just, this is how we're doing it. I always, I was a take charge person, but anyway, <laughs> so she, she, she's in a cast. She doesn't want to do it. And so months go by. There's snow, and then she's got a broken foot, and she. So eventually, when you saw that broken foot, you were like, "This is gonna hurt my." It's just going. Chances. It's not happening, and I'm trying to push it. And she's like, "I have a fucking cast on. I'm not doing. I'm not having a foursome with a cast. Guess what? We're not doing the foursome." And I was like, "Fuck, fuck, <laughs> oh damn you, Boston weather. Damn you, broken. Damn you, brittle bones." And I wanted to mention it and talk about it, but I felt like any other comic I told it to, or if I sat on stage, would just feel like I was being one of those douches who brags because uh, every comic is like <laughs> anytime a comic talks about sex they don't get sex and they're just bragging and i'm like i wish that, I that was simple <laughs> i could take back all those hard nights that i, I wish love I that didn't story do. though because it's like most guys are trying it's so insecure every guy's been there with like the girl has a cold and you're like come on let's fuck and she's like i don't feel good and you're like come on <laughs> Come on, what's fuck? Like, oh yeah. She's like, I have a fever. You're like, I don't care. I'll be quick. Come on, I'll be I got two qu- Latina immigrants. <laughs> yeah, you had a force of it. She was like, and then the proof. Cold, my foot's broken. Moved away, and we didn't talk to the other girl for a while. And it just, you know, it Never didn't happened. happen. But at the same time, it would have just been another thing for me to build it up. And at the yeah. same time, if you're having a threesome it, or a group thing, it depends on how much the girls are into each other. Because yeah. otherwise. It's a lot to do for a dude. I talk to plenty of guys who, I talk to guys that are always like, five minutes, dude, that's enough. But I was, 
as I told you earlier, when I was in Amsterdam, going, I always had a huge sex drive and stamina. I would just go for hours, and then yeah. I just come and go again, and just like seven times in a row over. I just had this boundless energy, and Damn. I couldn't handle, which led me to a lot of things. I Olaf will fucking carry you that. <laughs> well, I t- dude, I used to take Propecia. That kind of shrunk me down. Uh, gave me estrogen, so I got man tits and emotions. And um, you got emotional on that. I've heard some crazy things if, about that drug. Dude, I remember my, my girl was giving me a blowjob, and she goes, uh, she goes, oh, she pulls it out, and she goes, holy shit, your dick got bigger. And I was like, what? And we took out a ruler and measured it on the spot. It was a half inch bigger than I had last measured. And I was like, shit. <laughs> in, the la- <laughs> in the last measurement, which yep. was two weeks prior. I, I just do it up against the wall, and I just make a mark. <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, she was like, no, I know it. She goes, look, it goes inside me. Every woman is knows. She's like, every guy lies about his dick size. That was the thing I found too when I meet girls offline. They're like, it's so weird you didn't lie about your dick. And I was <laughs> like, what? I was like, I knew that when you met me, you would see how big it was. Why would I tell you it's two yeah, inches yeah. bigger? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do and that. They're like, either. every guy does that. I, I wouldn't like, do that. I, I give them the straight up. I just send a pic. Yeah, <laughs> I have plenty of those. I put a penny on it so they can tell exactly how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I've actually sent one of those. I'm uncircumcised, so I would just do Me the, too. I would just pull it back, and then the penny be sitting there, and I yeah. fling it across the room. Yeah, 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 <laughs> dude. I do it too. Those are the Snapchats I don't send you. Those, those just go yeah, to close friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's your Snapchat, by the way? Uh, it's Big Red Bane, which so is different funny. from B I B A I. It's different than all my other stuff because Snapchat doesn't let you change all my other. It's funny Social though. Media is my Your Snapchat's comedy. super funny. It's not all. Um, it's not dirty either. I mean, it's dirty, but it's not. Like no, I don't put up sexual. that. I, I would never put up that sort of stuff. But I put. I just put up funny stuff. Where Do I'm you ever? This will. We got like ten minutes. We're almost at two hours. This. Will, I haven't done a two-hour interview ever. So thank oh, you for shit. thank you for doing it. Um, I'm. Ex- it's so interesting. And we talked for like forty-five minutes before we. Yeah, started yeah, yeah. Recording. We had that talk, and you were like, "Save it for the podcast." Yeah. <laughs> um, I say that to myself too because I had a bunch. I was starting to ask you questions, and I was like, "Nah, this is stupid. We should do it on the podcast." But, like, with with your girl, like, do you have, like, there's you know, like, there's sex you have like with someone you love, and then there's like sex you have, just to like have sex. Lost. Like, is it ever like? Is it ever blurry or is it ever like, is that ever tough to deal with? Like, or is you just feel differently? Is it just a feeling thing? No, I mean, it's just, it's sex with someone. Like I always said, like, it wasn't about numbers for me. My, my thing was, I always wanted to meet someone I could be comfortable with. Yeah. Cause once you're comfortable with someone, then you fucking let down your inhibitions. Yeah. Then you're like, this is what I like and I don't feel scared. And if you're not okay with that, sometimes you can be like, Hey, what if we try this? And it's really wild. And then like, I don't want to do that. And you're like, okay, yeah. well you're trying, it doesn't work. And, and that's, that's the best. You meet a girl at a club, you're just going to go home and have Maybe it'll be fun. Sometimes you do meet someone that you sync with. I've had those times. And then sometimes it's just shit sex and you're drunk. Like, I never liked having drunk sex. Yeah. That's, that's horrible. That's one of the things Most that is Most of the time, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem getting hard, but I just couldn't come because I was so drunk. Yeah. It's like, how is this enjoyable? That one little thing. Like, I've had so many times when I'm like, I have wasted thousands of hours chasing this tiny little endorphin rush that lasts about... 30 seconds not yeah. even not even that much yeah and i look back on it and i'm like i did all that all that just for that little thing that doesn't mean anything and and, and then when you ha- just have sex where i was too drunk to even get it i'm like what the hell <laughs> what is the point i've been there i've definitely been especially when i was only when i was a heavy drinker would i like it's like i'd work on a girl all night long finally get her back to the place mm-hmm. and we're like having sex and i'd not be able to finish because i was so shit-faced and i'd just be like this was all like for nothing. It's so weird to me that that our society, like Americans, are so we're so backwards sexually, especially yeah, compared. To, like yeah. I remember going to Germany, and their malls would have like sex stores, and I walked into the store, and there's just like fifty year old w- businesswoman, and like literally just came from an office as a CEO, and she's picking out these leather fucking dominatrix outfits. There's two old like seventy five year old German couples. They looked cute as could be. They looked like two grandparents, <laughs> and they're just pointing and laughing at dildos and saying stuff in German. Yeah. And I'm like, they're just so comfortable. Yeah. Whereas, like, we're so repressed about that in such a weird way. Yeah. Like, that, that we time. need to Irish get... Catholic. We need... Even even the Protestant stuff, the yeah. humiliation of sex we have that comes from the old Puritans or the Protestant Midwesterners, yeah. the it's evangelicals, true, where you, you, you put that down, you, you, uh, you, you keep that shit 
Yeah, bury away, it, bury it, bury it away. It. Yeah. Like, like I found out, like, so circumcision in America, other than Jews and Muslims, we're the only country that does it. And the reason that we do it is because Kellogg, the guy who made cornflakes, yeah. was vehemently anti-sexual yep, I know all and about did this, it yeah. so the kids wouldn't beat off. It's a psycho, that We guy. do all, he used to put acid on girls' clits. <clears throat> they used to perform circumcisions on little boys he with no He made those bland, you know how, like, they make shredded wheat and, like, all the all the shittiest cereals? come from Kellogg's and he would make those and originally say feed these to your kids yeah. and they won't masturbate as exactly. much exactly isn't that crazy yeah that was his whole Graham thing Graham Crackers Graham is named after some horrible why guy. do you think Cornflakes suck so much because it's some dude who doesn't want to get off and have any fun <laughs> I guarantee you Frost, Frosted Flakes was just Kellogg's fun the cousin Mormon. that Cor- was going out and getting laid at all the fucking Corn Flakes are like the Mormon the 19th snack. century well that's it, good I'm glad to hear that I'm, I'm glad to hear that you and your girl are so happy and that, that was what well, I thought I, I don't also, know if I said this earlier, but like you were like, what are you were like, what did you think about? Me? I thought you were this dude who had his life really, really together. Like, in what way? I was just like, Bane, he's working hard at comedy. He's got a girlfriend. When a guy has like a good relationship, and I knew you did, that to me is like, he's got half of life figured out. Yes, I mean, dude, what is a good relationship? Me yeah. and my girlfriend fight, and we struggle, and we both deal with depression and anxiety and horrible emotions, but you just deal with them. Yeah. You, you make it better. You make, as I've been, I got to a point where I was like, I have to be a better person. Like, I have to be. I'm tired of this fucking shit. I'm, yeah. I can't be depressed and suicidal all the time. I can't be filled with, like, I just, I can't, what am I going to wallow in pain? Yeah. Oh, my whole life. Like, I, I want different. I want to make a change. And I was like, I have to be a better person. Yeah. I have to improve myself. And so I once I do that, once you you work on you, your relationship gets better. Your comedy, my comedy gets better. The other aspects of your life come along too. Like, I meet uh, so many young dudes, and maybe I'm not at a place where I should be giving this advice comedically, but I'm like, so many of you guys are trying to evolve your comedy. Com- comedy when you haven't evolved as a person that's true no you that's definitely true you, I, I, I saw that in myself when i started i was like i gotta fucking grow up a little bit here yeah i mean all all my jokes when i first started were just you know dick and pussy jokes and black and out jokes and yeah which i i got laughs then but that was also what i knew and all i was adept at talking about i yeah. wasn't ready to fathom you know what was going <laughs> all on my jokes are just pop culture ref- like references me too and yeah like, I, uh, so much of what I first wrote I would get great laughs on but it was a joke about a commercial and the commercial would go away in three months yeah and in yeah. that time I only did four mics so it was yeah same here I, like I do hack. stuff about like a, something that happened like a celebrity divorce or something I'd do jokes about that you know what's funny is I, I would make topical jokes and this was back when I was opening and hosting at certain rooms and, and certain old you know, middlers and people above me would come in behind me and they would have a joke about the same topic and I would be like, ah, oh, shit, well, this guy's ahead of me. I'm just, what am I going to do, fight? Yeah. I've never, even if a younger guy comes up with a joke that I have the same thing, I'm like, it, I'll just write a better joke. Same. It's yeah. not, I'm not fighting You can always with, write I'm another joke. I'm not fighting joke. with people over material. That's Stop ridiculous. caring about people stealing from me like a couple of years ago because I was just like, whatever, I flipped my act pretty, um, I'm going to make regularly. better stuff and as long as it's true to me and it's, <clears> they're not going to be able to take it the way I do it. Yeah. And, uh, I remember like watching some some older guys and I was like, oh, I have a joke about that same thing and that's a staple of my act when you only get five minutes. And then I dumped the joke because I'm like, even early on, I was horrified of being a hack, even two months in. And I remember... Or what I deem to be a hack, you know? Yeah. And then I, I see this person two years later and they're still doing a bit about this commercial oh, yeah, dude. or thing. And I'm like, oh, dude, that one. Cause oh, yeah. When I you, work with when guys you who do say, Ross Perot jokes. When you go to tell the audience, hey, remember this? or rem-, And then you yeah. go to explain it to them. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, yeah. oh, my spot cringes. I have one bit that's occasionally do about Michael Phelps smoking weed and... That, I've, that was one of them, dude. That yeah. was that was, that was the, my star bit of the uh, second time I ever did stand-up. I did him amazingly well for a dude doing the second time. And the other comics came up to me and like, how long you been doing it? And people, you know, Jason Cordova was there. He, he was, he came up. Jay Doe's former and, uh, guest gave, of hypothetically gave me down. Episode so, 99. Yeah. We started together at the vault at the same time. And he was, he was like, dude, that was, that was hilarious. And, um, then I remember other people just doing it, and I was like, "Oh fuck it, whatever." Yeah. I can't. I love Jason. I can't keep that up. Yeah, he's a great dude. He's been on a couple of times, actually. I gotta call him. It's been a while. Um, what do you want to do? Like, what do you what do you see? Like, what do you want for next year of comedy? Like, what kind of things? Just be a better comic. Move up. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Just want to progress. Where do you want? Like, where would you say you're at now? 
Like what what level? I'm a middle com I'm a middle act. Yeah. I'm a feature comic in New England. Um uh, who's always trying to get booked on more shit. You know? Are you working most weekends, you, you think? A uh, good amount. That's that's all that matters. I don't I don't have I haven't had I'm not having like months where I'm not busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's key. Uh, well, sometimes every, you know whenever you look at your calendar, I'm like I think oh, you I should need more. <coughs> I think you how much time do you think you I think you got an album's worth yet? I I mean I set I did a show I set up a show myself and I headlined it in hour material, um and I had some left a bunch left over. Did you record it? No, oh. I I I write profusely. Yeah, all the time, and uh, I've I've been at this for a while. And I come up with stuff and I put it in the bank, and I'm like, I'll save that, or maybe it's a B joke or a C yeah. joke, and I'm like, ah, uh, you know, when you find something you really want to work on, you kind of put that stuff behind and save it for when you need it. Of course, when or you're just doing one of those New England it. shows, and you need <laughs> you, you need that New England fucking twenty. Uh, yeah, me and Bulger talk about that a lot. You got to have like twenty minutes of shit just for that, you know. And then um. The, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I told you I got a headlining date at a room in the city that I'm excited for next year. Yeah, yeah. Nick's and so stop, I want right? Yeah, Nick's. And so I'm trying, it'll be, I, I haven't set up a date, but I talked. So it's going to happen. So I'm just trying to move up. To that and that's, what, that's all, I mean, that's how it goes. Like, you'll do that, and then that's a club you've now headlined, and then you can headline at other places. Yeah, and then just time. Uh, probably leave Boston, go to a new city. Yeah. Because um, I, I feel like there's only so far. Boston gets crowded, you know that. Yeah, so yeah, I feel like yeah. there's only so much you can do, and you know, you know what I um, I'm just another, you know, dumb. Uh, to to a lot of people around here, I'm just another dumb towny Mick. Yeah. With an A who can't pronounce a lot of ah. Yeah. And I'm very and like you said, oh, there's something in- interesting about you. And I remember I did a podcast with a couple guys, and afterwards they were like, "Dude, I just pictured you as this ordinary fucking just." Southie dude and I had talked with him about how I traveled across Europe by myself and like I just never expected that from you and yeah. I was like oh well thanks I'm glad that you I, thought I was a bonehead well, and a- I never I never thought of you that way to be honest I never thought of you as like a dumb Southie guy but you were a quiet guy you know what I mean like well because everyone in comedy is always just fighting over stupid shit and yeah. I'm like I just I have no patience for drama yeah and and I felt like and and I felt like if I had something to say, I'd say it. I also just don't open up to people right off the bat. I've yeah, never yeah. been that sort of person. Yeah, we met each other more and more often over the years. And I um I felt like it, it took I'm just I'm not a And I'm not super like I, I'm friendly, but I'm not super like come hang out. So like, many people are um I'm not like overly open right off the bat. And, yeah. um uh I take time to warm up to people and stuff and for them to warm up to me I don't think you just respect people right so I remember a, a certain comic saw me and I was standing apart from the group and she goes you're so aloof and I was like <laughs> what the fuck like I don't think I'm better than you I just don't know you guys well enough I feel weird inserting myself into your conversation yeah, which is I fine I feel awkward about that yeah. you guys are and then and then I started talking which should to people, be okay in comedy and and I found out most of these people don't know each other well. Everyone's just posturing and being fake with one another, which yeah. is something I hate about this business, but yeah, it is what it is. It's part of I'm it. a very direct and honest and genuine, real person, I think, I've been yeah. told. And, As uh, the past two hours uh, testifies to. So I, when I meet people, I'm just very direct. And, and yeah. so I meet so many comics who are like, I, I think these dudes are buddy buddy and they're in the same clique and then the guy leaves and they just shit on him and I'm like, oh, you yeah, guys have fucking friends. Yeah, yeah. I don't want, so, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't benefit by pretending to be your friend if I'm not. If we can be friends and let's be friends. I'm not a douchebag. I don't want to not have positive relationships yeah, with people. I got you. But I'm not going to force it because like you talked about on, I listened to your Zach interview and you talked about taking a, a dump and you heard people shitting on you in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. And I saw that so much in the comedy scene. Oh, yeah, dude. And it's, but lot, like you said, you lot. get through the open mic scene and, and that doesn't happen as much. Yeah. But it was like, that kind of just perturbed me. I got like a real sour taste for the, that that aspect of the scene. It kept yeah. me distant from. I mean, it. <clears throat> I saw it in New York and L.A. I never. Oh, did, I never did stand man. up in L.A., but I was an actor, which is even faker and even more. Like, oh, dude! Hey. I took acting classes, and I remember. The, oh God! I remember just like, you guys are brutal. Yeah, yeah. Actors are real tough to hang out with. Oh, I, I did this. I did so this small little phony. shoot where I had to be. Because, because like Will Noonan, I am a commercial fan, an amazing actor. Act. No, yeah. I was. It was a student film, and I was playing. <laughs> I auditioned for the lead, and they called me a month later, and like, oh, sent me an email. They were like, "We do want you wanna, to rape someone in this." Do you want to be? <laughs> do you want to be the sweaty husband? And I was like, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say no to anything. I'm a, I'm a dude who works, and I take everything that comes by way. So I drove up to New Hampshire, and I was a sweaty husband, and they covered me in Vaseline and baby oil and put me in a building where it was 95 degrees, and I sweat. I sweat my ass off for that scene. But then just hanging out in the RV with the other two actors, it was just, especially the lead, he was, I come in, he goes, oh, you look like a sweaty husband. And I was like, oh, I want to punch you in the face. Yeah, I hate, uh, I just, I go, just so I, I, I audition a lot during the week and like just sitting in the fucking waiting room with like all these dudes is one of the, one of the. Oh, dude, when I, when I tried out to play a young version of Louis C.K. Uh, and Me I walked too. in that, that odd, that Boston A lot of guys casting. were in that one. I thought you, you were my choice. I even said, I go, do you have Mike Bain coming in? Because like you looked. Like, Tony V sp- called me, especially yeah. back then. But I remember being like, "You guys got to like meet Mike," because they looked at like a lot of comics in Boston. Because mm-hmm. it was like young Doug Stanhope too, right? Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. who I was there for. But it was like I remember being like, to my kind of lady over there, I was like, "You got to wait do you see Mike Bain." I'm like, "He's the perfect guy for this." And, uh, and then they cast some. She him. called Fairy. me. <laughs> yeah, t- <laughs> it was funny because the kid has different eyes than Louis, so they went that doesn't look like him at all. No, I, I was like, "Oh, this is what Louis thinks he looks like." I, in his but, mind. but I that was my first ever audition. I was a very green comic. I fucking tanked it, and I went in there and I look down the aisle, and it's all these Jewish and Italian kids from Emerson, all brunettes. They look nothing like Louis, and they look at me, and I feel like the the air is taken out of the room. A real ginger just walked in, yeah. and they're like, "What do you do?" And I'm like. I'm a comedian, and they're all just like, oh. oh, fuck. He looks like him, and he's a comedian. And that that four minutes of Louis' material begins with him doing, eh, 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 these are dolphin jokes, people. Come yeah, on, get with yeah, it. Yeah, I remember that and so And so well. you, I just hear people doing dolphin impressions for 45 minutes while I'm waiting in the hallway. I go in there. Um, I try and do Louis' four minutes, and I, I get so nervous. I forget some of it. I also... I felt so alien doing another comics Same. act. It didn't I did feel too. right. It felt super weird. I felt uncomfortable, like I was in another man's skin. Yeah, exactly. And then they were like, all right, so Mike, do your own material. And I was early, and I was blue, and I got nervous, and I didn't have many jokes. And I did I did a joke where I, I my earliest opener, I I said, uh, ginger is our word. It's a term of endearment. Like, uh, So I say ginger with an A, not an E. Uh. That, was one <laughs> I, that was one of my first openers. So I did that, and then... What up, Jamie? I had this joke about, uh, I was like, oh, do you ever get mystery candy? You know, like a, a Starburst that's mystery flavored or a, 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 any of those a Dum Dums lollipop that's mystery flavored. Sometimes it tastes like strawberry butterscotch. Sometimes it tastes like dog shit and horse cum. <laughs> and I just <laughs> look at the woman who runs the business and her, her <laughs> smile is fading as I'm doing my bits. Like I'm watching myself, my dreams die to emoticons. Every line I get to, it's more of a frown. <laughs> and there's one of the girl filming, and she's smiling. So I'm like, oh, I'm killing with this half of the yeah. audience. This half of the audience. And uh, she likes horse. And I cum. go, <laughs> I go. That's what it's like when you're trying to fuck a bitch with a burka. And I was like, right then, <laughs> I'm like that's when I sealed the deal. <gasps> and it didn't matter how much I looked like Louis. They were like, we're done with this little fucking bitch with nonsense. a burka. Is so comedy like bitch with a burka kills in a club i bet <laughs> it did it, it did it, the, the, those were those were my bread and butter when yeah. i was first on out of the vault man yeah well that's that's pretty fucking funny man well i think that's good that's a good story to end it on all right anything you wanted to do uh anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to uh i don't think so i mean if we've already done we you know uh i mean there's plenty to talk about but i mean how i'll, I'll we'll do it kill, kill people here <laughs> we'll do, yeah, we did two hours. We, we, you and me can talk another we'll do, time. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do, we have to do another one, man. You're very uh, fucking easy I, to I've talk to. I've got plenty more to, to talk about. Um, where can people find you, man? Um, Twitter, Instagram, at Mike Bain, B A I N Comedy. Um, that's uh, my handle. Nice and easy. Uh, t- type in Mike Bain Comedy. Search me on Google. You'll find my YouTube page. You'll find my Facebook page. Yeah, follow Mike now. Um, so like in a sn- couple years when he's blowing up, you can be like, oh, no one even understands. My Snapchat is Big Red Bane. Yeah, I, I think we'll let me change that. Yeah, Mike's but, a super funny guy, and he's going going places, man. Yeah, uh, when are you putting this out? I'll be arguing with you for headlining work soon. <laughs> uh, it's probably tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow morning. All right, so. Maybe even tonight. <laughs> I guess I can put this out. Yeah. A- after talking about my filth, um, <laughs> I, I I am I'm at the comedy scene uh, opening for Paul Verzi this weekend. Oh, dude, so. Verzi's the shit. Also been a guest on this podcast. I remember. I heard it's that one of episode. my favorite episodes. Uh, I'm very excited. If not my favorite. Um, all my other He's stuff. He's the shit. I'm gonna come out and see one of those shows. Uh, I'm putting, you know, d- don't worry, I'm not. Uh, I, I will not be. Don't 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 expect me to talk about smashing trannies. Uh, <laughs> in front, in, while I'm trying to open the ball, I, I, the best. I, I, I am f- 
pr- professional and funny. He would um, love. Oh, dude, your act is super funny, and it's gotten all, it's gotten funnier and funnier. But you were at Kappa last week, and I was dying. I enjoyed. The Thanks, shit man. Out of it. Yeah, the uh, the older crowd down there doesn't always get it. So, yeah. but it, it is what it is. But, but it doesn't it, matter. You find, especially from this and other things, and you should do your own podcast too. The people. Um, I got to do that. You'll I get gotta, the people who want what you got. They'll come to you. You know. Yeah, but you know, I'll just follow me on that shit, man. I'll put up shows. I'm always I'm always doing stuff in the city, and I don't. I don't always. I usually retweet and add stuff about that at last minute. You so. got any videos on YouTube like of you doing stand up? People, can uh, check I out? have one or two. I gotta go through because certain jokes I didn't just want out there, and um, I also a lot of them are hidden. So when I send it to festivals, yeah. if I don't want them to see dirty stuff, you know, set festivals want a clean comic. Or also, when, after I got smashed on Bobby Kelly's podcast, yeah. I had a Bobby has a lot of O and A fans. Oh yeah, I know and I was all like, about that. I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to make sure to hide a lot. I went through and hit a lot of my stuff in preparation, and I just did not hide it. But I've got some goofy This videos. also has a lot of O&A fans. Oh, nice. Well, because you do Anthony's show. Yeah, you, yeah. They, they can go on there and call me a faggot, uh, <laughs> uh, a hey, ginger fag. They uh, love Norton, so fuck it. But, but, but no, uh, anyway, I um, yeah, if, I think I have a couple videos up there. Uh, I'm, I have some that I put. I found a, I'm trying to do more videos now. I really like doing that stuff. I found a bunch of my old Vine shit. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. now because no one saw it yeah. then, and Vine's gone. I'll retweet so that shit. I love a good I Vine. I put it on my Twitter. You're great I on I Vine, it, too. I put it on my, um, my um, Facebook page, and I put it on my YouTube account. Yeah, definitely check and follow Mike Bain. I've been very much a technological savage, and I've, I've, I've had – had to be an adult and realize this 1975 style of comedy <laughs> doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it just you gotta, can't be. You gotta I'm, get so I'm out. out there. You know, I'm yeah, producing good. content now. And I'm People just, want everything. They want to, they want to see your comedy, but they want to listen to your thoughts. I'm still too. a novice when it comes to work and these sort of things. But. Well, fucking you're getting there, man. Um, let's end on one last funny question. Of all the safe words that you ever used, what was one of the funniest ones? Shenanigans. <laughs> Awesome. That was one I purposely gave out because it would make me laugh whenever she said it. So it would immediately, the mood didn't just come from, a, oh my God, it went shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks, Mike. All right, dude. Thanks, thanks for, for having going me on, on, dude. Definitely appreciate it.